You're looking at Milwaukee County Stadium, the scene set for tonight's NFL clash between the New York Jets and the Green Bay Packers. The New York Jets featuring, as they always do, the gimpy-legged quarterback from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, whose passing arm accounted for more yardage than any other National Football League quarterback just one year ago. Joe Willie Namath will be throwing to receivers like these. There, he's close to his own goal line, looking to get out of trouble and hitting little but fleet-footed Eddie Bell to do exactly that. Then, his favorite receiver, the angular tight end Richard Castor. All six feet, five and a half inches of him with that huge loping and speedy stride. Joe Willie Namath, but he'll have to worry, or at least his team, about the powerhouse running attack of the pack. Led by these two men, MacArthur Lane, 36, John Brockington, 42. The Jets against the Pack tonight. 15 seconds there. Let's have a good one, everybody. Stand by all cameras. Ready, slow-mo. Stand by videotape. All set, Howard. OK, Frank. And rotate. Four, three, nice two, two, one. The New York Jets versus the Green Bay Packers. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury. See all the new 74s Friday, September the 21st, the day of the cap. And by Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell, and welcome to our first regularly scheduled NFL Monday Night Football game right here on abc tonight as already stated the jets against the pack and fortunately at the moment at least no rain we had 16 hours of rainfall here it stopped within the past two hours it's a damp chilly night but good for football temperature 51 degrees winds 18 north northwest and apparently the field is in good condition, though that may become questionable later. We'll get astute observations on that during the course of the game from our resident expert on the Green Bay Packers. Nobody lost more critical games to them in the history of football than Don Merritt. Thanks a lot, Howard. I'm not for sure of the winds from the north-northwest, though, but most of it was right. As you can see, Howard's ready, and the Green Bay Packers and the New York Jets are, too. He mentioned the running attack of the... Green Bay Packers, he didn't mention much about the passing attack, and possibly that's, there's a reason for that. They haven't passed very well in preseason. That seems to be one of their problems. The Jets, as he, Howard also mentioned, do pass well, but the Green Bay Packers are blessed with one of the best defensive secondaries in football, and last year they were the best against uh, touchdown passes. It's going to be one of these games, and uh, anything could happen. I happen to think Namath can throw against anybody. He's got some good folks to throw against tonight. It's going to be a good ball game. Frank has got a lot of more details than I do, folks. So I'm going to bring in Frank right now to talk to you. Frank, what you got to say, buddy? Well, I like what you say about Joe Namath. We remember him last year, our final Monday night telecast, when he really shook up Oakland, completing 25 of 46. We're looking for that kind of a game tonight. The Jets passed the ball. Well, two-thirds of their offense is the passing game, and it isn't only because of Namath. They have two great wide receivers. Rich Caster in preseason caught 13 passes, four of them for touchdowns, and he averaged 39 yards per catch. He is truly an amazing athlete. He's 6'5", Jerome Barkham on the other side is 6'4". The Jets running game is a little lack, but it may pick up tonight because John Riggins, their most valuable player from last year, has returned to the fold. He has been in the Jets camp three times this year. He finally came back last Thursday. He says he's ready to play. He's only worked out twice. Meanwhile, it'll be interesting to see what the Jets will do with Jim Nance, a man they have reclaimed from Philadelphia. And now we... Look at Joe Namath, the man who can excite any football fan, and he excites a lot of young ladies around this country, too. We're looking for a great game from Milwaukee, the New York Jets versus the Green Bay Packers, and we'll be back at Milwaukee County Stadium for the kickoff after this. 
Sometimes your future may be captured in a single moment, in the present. The sun is shining, things are growing, things are going well with you and me. Future plan together, rich for life together, things look bright as they can be. Metropolitan life, where the future is now. On patrol in Alaska, helping them through the winter is more than a job. It's a life. And that's the only way you'd have it. Because you know you only go around once. And you've got to do it with gusto. Once around life, once around And back in Milwaukee County Stadium, we're ready for our national anthem as sung by the Naval Air Training Command Choir of Pensacola, Florida. Excitement in Milwaukee tonight, the New York Jets and the Green Bay Packers getting their 1973 seasons underway. The Packers, indeed, were back last year. They went to the playoffs with a 10 and 4 record, lost to Washington. The Jets, a so so season. They were 7 and 7. This year, in preseason, they've had a fine preseason. They were 4 and 2. That record, their best since 1966. Meanwhile, the Packers were 3, 2 and 1 in preseason. Two fine football teams, explosive. This is the New York Jets, and this is Bobby Howfield. Bobby Howfield getting set to kick off. The Jets, as we mentioned at the top of the show, a passing team. The Green Bay Packers, a running team. Those reasons, the personnel. On your right is Ike Thomas, number 37. He has been deadly returning kickoffs during preseason, averaging over 37 yards. On your left, Don Highsmith. You might recall Don Highsmith with open last year. We're about to get underway in Milwaukee. There's Scott Hunter, much pressure on this third year man from the University of Alabama, as both quarterbacks are underway. Outfield with a low driving kick, and it'll move to the end zone. Touchback, Green Bay will take over, first and 10 on their own 20. Scott Hunter will open a quarterback, perhaps Dan Devine might like to have started Jim Del Gazio, a young man he acquired from Miami a few weeks ago, but it will be Scott Hunter, Jim Del, Del Gazio with bad ribs. MacArthur Lane, 36, Brockington, 42, the setbacks. Wide receivers will be John Staggers, number 22, Barry Smith, the All-American from Florida State, the other wide receiver, number 80, Rick McGeorge, number 81, is the tight end. And Brockington gets the first call, and Brockington showing the power that led him to gain over 1,000 yards in his first two years, picking up six yards. Frank, the Packers have apparently opened with a two tight end offense. 81, as you mentioned, McGeorge, and 88, Lenny Garrett, the tight end who saw so much action a year ago when McGeorge was out. An early evidence that the Pack figures they can run strongly against the Jets' defensive line. And it certainly would indicate that. It'll be second down and six. Lenny Garrett, the other tight end, he was very number 88. Hunt, 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 hunt. This is MacArthur Lane. 
Arthur Lane being hit by Steve Tannen. Steve Tannen coming up to make the tackle from the secondary. He's replacing the Jets' Chris Ferrisopoulos, who will not play tonight. Let's look at that offensive line for the pack. Ken Bowman is the center, 57. Gillingham, 68. Luke, 62 of the guards. Himes, 72. Hayhoe, 77 of the tackles. Strong running team, and now even stronger with two tight ends. Now Barry Smith is in the game. Up to the right. Third down and three. The ball resting at just about the 28-yard line. Just underway from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Here comes Brockington. McCarthy Lane with a block out in front. And spilled up there by Ralph Baker, the veteran linebacker on the left side, number 51 for the New York Jets. Net will bring up fourth down for the Green Bay Packers. Coming up short is Brockington. To commit with two tight ends, Frank, is also gives the defense an opportunity to commit to stop that. That time Baker played that run to the outside. They're bringing the guys up closer to the line, so we'll see if that works. It didn't work the front the first time they tried. Here's Ron Whitby. He'll be kicking to a lone safety man, Chris Parasopoulos, who we told you was injured, and this one will come up short, and Rocky Turner, number 29, will let it roll. So will the Packers. As it takes a strong Packer bounce. All the way down to the 25-yard line. 49-yard punt by Ron Whitby. Mike Donahoe, number 86, watching that ball roll for the Packers. So we'll look at the Jets for the first time tonight. They, of course, also with their Alabama quarterback, a much more celebrated one in Joe Namath. Their setbacks will be Emerson Boozer, number 32, and number 35, Jim Nance. Wide receivers are Margene Atkins, number 26, and Jerome Markham, number 83, the tight end, perhaps the dangerous, most dangerous receiver in football is Rich Castor. Namath giving to Boozer, a fly goes up. Boozer goes down just over the line of scrimmage. Offsides, Green Bay. Running down that offensive line of the New York Jets, the veteran John Schmidt is at center. He's 52. A rookie, Gary Petz, is starting at right guard, number 78. Randy Rasmussen is the left guard. He's 66. Bob Sway is 76. And Winston Hill in the tackles. Winston Hill, 75. A good shot at Rich Castor. He'll be going most of the night against the defensive safety man, Al Matthews, of the Packers. First down, five yards. For the Jets, they're moving from their own 30. Namath with his first passing attempt. Looking deep for Castor, overthrown. Castor getting a lot of attention from the rookie linebacker, number 56, McLeod, and number 29, Al Matthews. We talked about young McLeod a couple of weeks ago, Frank. The pack is terribly high on him. He came to camp without a big reputation. His third-round draft choice, he proved to be a big hitter. They like him. Ma Jean Atkins is in there because he's got superior body strength, upper body strength to little Eddie Bell, and the young pack defenders use a lot of bump and run. They figure Atkins can work against that better than Bell. All right, it'll be second down and five. Nansen moves with the setbacks. Now, Barker moves out to the left. He picks up single coverage there from Kenny Ellis. With the handoff, the trap handoff to Boozer, a big hole. Right over Randy Rasmussen, he's over the 40 to the 42. Hit there by Willie Buchanan, number 28. 12-yard game by Emerson Boozer. Must be encouraging to see that kind of run, Frank, because that middle of the line is something the Packers are really proud of. They think Jim Carter is, is right now and will be one of the great middle linebackers in the game. He also has a couple of big defensive tackles in Bob Brown and Mike McCoy in the middle. So they went right at him that time, picked up the first down. But they did. First down and 10 from the 42-yard line. First, first down of the game. 12-10 remaining in the first quarter from Milwaukee. And Jets appear to have jumped offside. Namath with lots of time going for Caster. Overthrown. <laughs> Wait for the call. Offsides, Green Bay. And it'll give us time to tell you this telecast is presented by the authority of the Green Bay Packers Football Club. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Green Bay Packers Football and the National Football League is prohibited. Head coach Weeb Eubank, 66 years old, 25 years in football. This will be his last season. He'd like to go out winning. 
He's been troubled the last four years with the injuries to Namath and all the rest of the injuries. He really would like to go out a winner. First down at five, the ball at the 47. Four, three. Call of Joe Namath. The handoff goes to Boozer. And Boozer running into Tom McLeod, number 56. And also coming up quickly, Willie Buchanan, number 28. Fine secondary of the Packers, and they'll probably be tested on the, this next play. We'll tell you, Buchanan is at one corner. He's 28. Kenny Ellis is on the other corner. He's number 48. Jim Hill is the free safety. He's 39. Al Matthews, 29, is the tight safety. They do not flip-flop, however. They just anticipate the strong formation going right. In all of last year, they only gave up seven touchdown passes. And they face tonight, perhaps the game's greatest pass. Ball at the 48. Name it. Putting Barkham out to the left, up against Kenny Ellis. Barkham holds on to it. Inside the 40. Can't knock uh, Al Matthews for that one because he was right there on him, or was it? I don't know who it was. That ball was right in the middle. Well thrown. You can't knock anybody when Barkham catches a pass. If the Jets have an overwhelming strength, it's in their receivers. Barkham now in his second year got a late start last year after a long holdout, but he gives promise of being another Otis Taylor. Perhaps not as much straight ahead foot speed as Otis, but very much like him in size and everything else. And if Green Bay doesn't put on a pass rush, you are going to see some kind of passing show tonight. They have not even been close to jump. First down and 10, the ball inside the 40, just inside the 40 of Green Bay. Great blocking by that offensive line, plenty of time, again the completion to Barkham. Inside the 25, almost to the 20 goes Barkham in. Right there, covering was Jim Carter, getting help from Jim Hill. Frank, I think you you hit it right on the spot because uh, the Packers have not had a good preseason in rushing the passer. Their primary pass rush guy is Bob Brown. Uh, Mike McCoy is primarily noted for his stopping the run and the draw plays, but uh, they do have to get some kind of pressure on him. Doesn't make a difference how good those secondary guys are. You give a guy like Namath time to throw with the kind of receivers he's got, and they're going to score. Namath, two of three for 32 yards. The ball just short of the 20-yard line. The Jets moving from their own 20-yard line. Namath again, putting Barkham to the left. He picks up Kenny Ellis, number 48, who comes up at the top of the screen to the bump and run. To the right is Adkins. Namath again with time. The screen out to Nance. Good block by Swias out in front. Nance moving down to the 15. Dandy mentioned uh, the job that they'll have to do on Bob Brown, at least by indirection, because Bob is their pass rusher. That's the job of Randy Rasmussen tonight. And talking about it this morning, he wasn't looking forward to it with particular relish, but with a great deal of hope, as well as anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we may as well round that out, Howard. Alden Roche is at the right defensive end, 87. Mike McCoy, the left tackle, 76. Clarence Williams. 83, the left defensive end, a lot of burden on that front four to get to Joe Namath. Second down, five, the ball at the 15. Again, Markham going to the top of your screen, picked up by Ellis. Namath, again, this time he will be wiped out by the blitzing Tom McLeod. And boy, he was hit. Now, you can't even see Nance, who, was, who missed him. Nance came in there, and he realized that he laid on the ground for a little while, then, oh, man, I'm sorry. These guys know how important Joe is to their offense. Uh, Nance was going out on a pass route. It's uh, like a check and then go. He uh, was supposed to block that blitzing linebacker. McLeod is the rookie in there, Frank. Third round draft choice, and he has really played super football this year. And they're supposed to be a very bright guy. He's caught on to all their defenses very well. And he actually moves like a veteran. Okay, third down and 15. The ball at the 25. Again, Barkham out to the left. Atkins on the right. We have not seen that much of Rich Caster. Caster now being covered by Jim Hill. To Joe Namath's left. Looks like a reverse to Caster. And reading it beautifully. Well, first McLeod and then Hill. Well, McLeod was the guy that did it, though, Frank, because that was the guy that slowed up that thing from getting on the outside. The end of in around reverse only works if they can get around that corner in a hurry. They sure went backwards in a hurry as we look at this again. Dandy take over. Well, it's just a flip back to him, and the, the key is to get around to the outside. You see McLeod there. He read it, came up, pursued. He got penetration, and he really didn't make the tackle, but he did give him plenty of time. That's Hill coming up there. 
And this is Bobby Howfield. He'll be kicking from the 41-yard line. That'd be AFC in scoring last year with 121 points. It's on its way. No good. Bobby Howfield misses on the left. So it remains the Jets zero, the Packers zero here in Milwaukee. What is this, some kind of a joke? You guys brought me to a bingo game? That's just different, Klaus. Skittle bingo. You gotta shoot for numbers. You shoot for us, get it? Who asked you? You gentlemen come to play? Move it. You're in luck, there's a seat open. You see, boss, you shoot the small ball for the letters and the big ball for the numbers. G8. Hey, I got it. Good, boss. I-5. Hey, I got that one, too. <laughs> okay, now I shoot. I-4. That's it. Bingy. Uh, the name of the game is Bingo. Change it. Scapo Bingo by Bango. It's Skittle Scuttle by Bango. Who asked you? Scuttle Ringo by Bango. Wrong. It's Skittle Scuttle Bingo. That's what I said. That's right, boss. Who asked you? Scuttle Bingo by Bango. Is that it? You asking me, boss? Yes, I'm asking you. That's it. Who asked you? What about Bingy Bingy? I like it. I like it. Who asked you? It's Skittle Bingo by Aurora. Bobby Alfield missed for the Jets from 41 yards out. The Green Bay Packers will take over for the second time this evening. 7.26 remaining in the first quarter. Defensive change, as I alluded to earlier, in the Jets secondary. Steve Tannen has replaced Chris Ferrisopoulos. We'll run down that secondary for you in just a moment. But the Packers now moving from their own 20, first and 10. Scott Hutter, the quarterback. MacArthur Lane. Up over the line of scrimmage, a gain of about two. A secondary for the Jets where they, well, they were the worst in pro football last year. 26th against the pass. has changed considerably. Dallas Howell is at the left corner. He's number 20. Burgess Owens, the number one draft pick of the Jets, is the strong safety. He's number 22. And now Steve Tannen, number one pick himself four years ago, is playing the free safety. Ritz Sowells is on the right side, number 46, replacing Early Thomas. So a bit of a makeshift secondary for the Jets tonight here in Milwaukee. Second down and nine. Here comes Brocking. Gillingham with the block out in front. Brocking. Over the 25 to the 27. Stopped there finally by Richard Neal, number 81. Coming all the way over from defensive right tackle. You notice the way the Jets are lining up defensively. There have been some variations even this early in the game against the slim number of running plays the Packers have engineered. But 51, Ralph Fake is right up on that line, Frank, as you've seen. Ebersol will often move right up there. Number 55. There's Baker. Right up on there. All right, it's third down and three. The other tight end. Then Garrett has come on for added blocking strength, we presume. And this time the play fake. Scott Hunter going to Stagger. John Stagger has it. And it will go back to the 48. He was in the clutches of Steve Tannen and Rich Sowell. Once you are touched, and then go down. That is where the ball is marked. 25-yard gain. Good fake, Don. Break is a good break, fake and also a good throw. This is a third down and short yardage situation. I thought Staggers was going to drop that ball. But he was right, right for the money. He also had a man open out in the uh, uh, flat. I believe that was either Brockton or Lane. I couldn't tell for sure when he came out of this uh, third down situation. So he had two receivers open. Oh, and jumping offside to Drips Majorge on the first down. Ball at the 48-yard line now, the New York Jets. That's three offside penalties against Green Bay in just the first quarter, which is in the face of or in the wake of the six exhibition games they've played. Seems odd. An absence of coordination in that regard. It is the first preseason game, however, and the butterflies can really be in the stomach. Let's watch. Now, as the Packers move back into their own territory on the strength of that five-yard penalty. Staggers is left. Two tight end offense. And MacArthur Lane getting about two yards. That was the five-man line that Howard alluded to a while ago, Frank. They had a man over the center. Uh, what that really does is when they bring the two linebackers into the middle, they try to stack up that off-tackle hole. That's primarily where... Green Bay does a lot of their running, and they put the two linebackers in the middle to try to stop up the, the two middle holes. 
Uh, that's why if this team could pass a little bit, they've got to get that ball in the air. That was the first down. That's a good time for an audible. You see that five-man line? Don't you know? Don't don't run into it. Come off of it. All right, on second down and 13, the ball at the 49-yard line, the Packers' own 39-yard line. And going out to MacArthur Lane. And MacArthur Lane will be just short of the first down at the 39. Taken out of bounds up by John Ebersole. 13-yard pickup. When the Packers do pass, that's one of their trademarks. Because they don't have the all-purpose passing game, although Scott Hunter is surprising the Jets now. They're dedicated to defending the run. He said two out of two. They throw off into their backs, and MacArthur Lane was their key receiver a year ago. One of the things that uh, you can look for, uh, well, I'll get to it in a minute. It's not that big a deal anyway. <laughs> Third down and one. Big deal right now for Scott Hunter. All resting just inside the 40 of the Jets. Give this to Brockington, and Brockington is met right at the line of scrimmage. Did he have the second effort to pick up the first down? We'll see. Bottom of the pile. That was a case of just too many white shirts and not enough of those green ones because they didn't have those folks blocked over there. It was a short yardage situation. Very similar. They didn't make it. Brockington was met head on. I really am not sure who was the guy that made the tackle. But they've got Chester Markle now, and let's see if he can produce where Bobby Howfield could. He'll be kicking from just the same distance that Howfield missed. Marco led all scorers last year in the NFL, 128 points. And he's hit on the last 11 of his 13 in preseason. He once kicked one at 66 yards at Hillsdale College. This one goes about 30. Short, and we're going to get a roughing call, I believe. Oh, they got him. Against too, Burgess first. Owens, they wiped out Chester Marco. Personal foul. See how bad they did hit him. That's the kind of penalty infraction that can kill you. Well, I don't believe he's hurt as bad as he let on because that no. didn't look like but it was still tough a deal. needless penalty at a moment when there was a turnover. The ball was a bad snap from Senna. Markle didn't get good foot on it. Yeah, but that guy blocked him into it in the way, Howard. I agree, you know, it's a costly penalty, but he was knocked in there. That's one of those things I don't uh, know what the... Obviously, it is a penalty to do that. He hit it pretty good. He's rushing that kicker. First down, running into the kicker, five yards. The ball now at the 34-yard line. Scott Hunter directing the attack. Out to MacArthur Lane. Brockington gets a block. So did... Garrett and Brockington, other MacArthur Lane, picks up about four. John Ebersole, number 55, made the stop. John Ebersole probably is the best middle linebacker on the Jets football team. Let's take a look at it again. This is the pitch. You see Brockington, number 42. He throws a good block right here. I think it's number 88. Looks like to me on the outside. He's also throwing a real good block. Picked up a good yardage. That's about three yards. <laughs> Ebersole at one linebacker, 55. Baker, the other, 51. Atkinson, number 62, the middle linebacker for the Jets. Second down, a long six. Hunter, well, no one in the area. It was a wide open area. It looks like Nate, I was going to say Smith probably missed an audible. That's their number one draft choice Because out there. he was going straight down on an apparent fly pattern, number 80, of course, and we talked about just a few weeks ago when we had the pack against the Chiefs in a preseason game. With nobody in the vicinity, it had to be exactly what you said, Dandy. All right, we've just been informed. Chester Markle is all right. John Staggers comes back in on the third down and six. The ball resting at the 30. Staggers goes out to the right, but George out to the left, where he can work on Rich Soul. And it's over the middle of MacArthur Lane. First down and inside the 15, down to the 10. Stopped by Steve Tennant. Well, they're doing just what we didn't really expect them to do, and they're throwing very well. Scott Hurst coming back. You'll watch MacArthur Lane come out. This hey, was, that was a good move, too, Don. It was a good move, Frank. Rose Ebersole. And it was a, a double circle move, which many linebackers say is the most difficult pattern for them to cover. They have both backs coming out of the back backfield at the same time. But Hunter had a, another man open on the other side. That pass that he had uh, called a while ago to Smith, they're still open to the outside. Hal is playing a little bit deep. All right, still no score. 2.20 remaining in the first quarter from Milwaukee, but the Jets threatening. They're at the 10-yard line. The other Packers threatening at the Jets' 10. 
Comes MacArthur Lane. Watch Brockington. Beautiful block by Brockington. Inside the five to the four. It's the same kind of thing. We had Lynn Garrett again, number 88, Frank, who was out there in front, too, and Brockington. It looks as if that play is going to be stopped. Here it is again. Then all of a sudden, they run it off, you know, an awful lot of times. You'll see Lane following him. There's a good block by Brockington. And there's Garrett pushing out on the outside. And he cuts right in the middle of them. Awfully hard to stop with execution like that. The ball now just inside the five-yard line. Steigers is in. Goes out to the right. The two tight ends, McGeorge, 81. Garrett, 88, are both in. This is Lane again behind Brockington. It's about two. Let's see where they mark it. Not a big offensive line, but a very strong offensive line for these Packers. The veteran Ken Bowman at center has been there for 10 years. One of three Packers who played in two Super Bowls. All right, they'll mark it just about the three yard line. Call it the two and a half. Lane now, 19 yards. He's carried the ball six times. Barry Smith is placed out to the right. Scott Hunter trying to quiet the partisan crowd. Lane again, and again, the Jets hold at about the one. Ebersole, 55, Mark Lomas, 84 over there. Well, I can't, I like, anyway, they're bringing that field goal team in, looks like. coming in again, and obviously he's not at all damaged. That was a good defensive stand there, uh, guys, when you think about it. Those guys had their backs to the wall. They had a, a great, they put together a good drive. Marched down, was that 80 yards with that drive? From, uh... In this field goal. So it was an 80 yard drive. They stopped him on the two. That should do something for him. Come out here with only a field goal. Let Joe Willie have it. He may put seven up there. All right, Chester Markle, number one draft pick a year ago, and what a great pick he has been. No question this time. Markle puts the Packers on the scoreboard first. The Green Bay Packers out in front of the New York Jets, three to nothing. We'll be back right after this. To get the riding comfort of a big car like this, but in a smaller, economical size, once took an act of magic. But now, for 74, there's Mercury Montego, the personal size car, designed to give you the riding comfort and luxury of a big car. Mercury Montego. It's the neatest trick of the year. One minute, Mr. D. Coming. Don't want to miss this last play. There. You can even pick up sound from TV with this General Electric FM AM portable. It's a great entertainer. And when you can't watch your favorite TV show, you can just listen. Wherever you are. Golf course, kitchen, backstage. Entertainment's where my head is, and G's got it all. Like this portable beauty with TV sound. Give one to someone. Portable radios by General Electric. Chester Markle doing what he did 33 out of 48 times last year for the Green Bay Packers. They put the Packers out in front, of three to nothing. 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Packers using six minutes and 41 seconds and 11 plays to go 80 yards. On your left, Margene Atkins obtained from New Orleans in a trade by the Jets in past off season. And on your right is Cliff McLean. McLean and Atkins, both speedsters. Driving kick that Atkins will field at the five. Well, we had some real interesting action oh. back here on the back, too. Frank, we probably missed it. So they had three of the Jets take off after Chester Markle after he kicked the ball. Well, they all missed it, or at least he got out of the area. Perry Williams moving down for the Packers to make the stop. All right, let's see what the Jets can unleash. Atkins remains in at wide receiver in place of Eddie Bell, whom we have been accustomed to seeing there. Jerome Barkham, the other wide receiver on the left side. It's Castro, the tight end, 88. Emerson Boozer trying it up the middle. Gain of about two, perhaps three. 
interesting that they've been using Boozer on the run. Emerson, of course, out for a time because of his... Well, let's take a look at Chester kicking. This is what I was talking about, Howard. This is an example wow. of America's favorite pastime. <laughs> that we mean no harm to your bodies out here. It's all in fun. Uh, Chester learned quickly in one year, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Second down at six. Ball at the 23-yard line. Mamet moving his receivers around and his backs as the gun sounds ending the first quarter. And the only score thus far... Chester Markle's nine-yard field goal for Green Bay. We'll be back with more action right after this. Injector shavers, the best shave of your life is just ahead. Introducing Track 2 Twin Injector Blades. Twin blades that fit your injector razor. Now you can get twin blade closeness and safety. As the first edge shaves, it lifts the whisker so the second edge can shave it again. With closeness and safety never possible from injector shaving until... Track 2 Twin Injector Blades. New from Gillette. For the best injector shave of your life. The Paper Mate Company's hip to make a pen with a nylon tip that costs just 29 cents. Right on, brothers, right on. With the Paper Mate Right Brothers pen. Right Brothers is the name the nylon tip is fame. The 29 cent Right Brothers pen. It keeps on writing great. Cause it's made by Paper Mate. Right on, brothers, right on. With the Paper Mate Right Brothers pen. You get a Paper Mate point and a Right Brothers body. I'm Bard Starr. There are a lot of people in this life who can't make it without you. Old people, young people, handicapped children, kids without parents, people who can't read or write. They don't need a handout. They need a hand. If you can spare even a few hours, please call your local Voluntary Action Center or write Volunteer, Washington, D.C., 20013. What we need, money can't buy. We need you. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Frank Gifford, along with Don Meredith and our author, whose book, Cosell, by Cosell, has hit the newsstands all over America today. America's been waiting for that. It's sold out of Milwaukee. Did you buy them all, Howard? <laughs> Second down and seven. Name it. Back to pass. Plenty of time again. Gets it to Boozer. Boozer holds on out to the 33, hit there by Jim Carter. I was about to say earlier, until we went to the Chester Markle replay and the Jets' personal siege of him, that so far, interestingly, we haven't had one call for Jim Nance to run the ball. And interestingly, too, John Elliott, once an all-league defensive lineman, hasn't yet seen action for the Jets. All right, loser moves it out to the 33-yard line. First and 10 for the Jets. Again, a name it with the exception of one time having plenty of time to throw the ball. Puts Atkins to the right, number 26. He runs into Willie Buchanan there, and it looks like the Jets again have gone off sides. Uh, I don't know. Or were it, they drawn off? I Green Bay. My day, Green Bay. Riggins is in there now. This is, uh, I believe, his first time to play, too, isn't it? Yes, it is. Of course, he's been the subject of controversy throughout the entire training period. Reported in at one point, a wide differential in his reported salary demands from what was offered to him then went back to St. Tralia, Kansas, then reappeared last week, signed. He's had two workouts. And the only way he's going to be able to get in the shape is to play himself in shape. He is a super player when he's in condition. All right, the five yards will move the Jets forward to the 38-yard line. Namath directing traffic. Riggins, the going deep back. His first carry of 1973, and he picks up the first down and more over the 45 to the 47. Runs with a power hardly reflective of the former star who has just moved into the next booth to wave to us in his jovial way. The golden boy, your old friend, number five, Paul Horner. And there you saw the call that really hurts defensive, rather offensive backs. The holding call against the Jets. So Riggins, first down. And pickup will be nullified. 
Mistakes kill you. That's the old story of football written about so often by the football scribe. Nance's failure to pick up McLeod on a blitz killed off the first jet drive. And then Howfield's failure with what still should have been a reasonably easy field goal cost him that three points. Then the mistake by Burgess Owens when Markle's kick didn't go anywhere near the uprights, gave them, the, the Packers, their extra chance. Mistakes will kill you. Now the holding penalty. All right, first down and 20 yards. Ball at the 23. And here comes the blitz. McLeod coming. This time he's picked up. Namath reads it, gets it off to Barkham, and I believe it's picked off. Did he have it? No, he did not. Jimmy Hill coming over from free safety could not find the handle. Nonetheless, that was some evidence of Jimmy Hill and his range and coverage. And the Jets are detected holding once again. Let's look at the replay again. Jimmy Hill at free safety moves a long way. You see him looking back into that backfield, Frank, and that's what the free safeties do. They try to get a direction where that ball goes. He's stretching out there for it. I believe he had it. He hit the ground. It just kind of fell out. There's a referee right there close. And made a good call. There's Scott Hunter on the side. Scott's having a good night, but three for four at about 50-some yards, I think. That's true, Don. The major gains made by the Packers have not been on the ground, but rather in the air. The two to MacArthur Lane, the one to John Stagger. All right, the holding penalty, half the distance to the goal, will move the Jets all the way back to the 11-yard line. That's been a common failing offensive holding of the Jets in recent years, Frank. Killed them off in many critical situations. Well, one of the reasons might be this man, too. They desperately want to protect him. He was only sacked seven times last year. That means he is either releasing it early, or they are holding a lot, or they're blocking well. And it's probably somewhere in between all of that. First down and 35. The draw play goes to Boozer. Good move by Boozer, oh. Frank. That thing was supposed to go up the middle or just go where it's an opening. And he saw one of the outside, picked up some good yardage. Boozer out to the 28. Gain of 16 yards, stopped by Jim Carter and Tom McLeod. At the shuffling of the Jets. Be second down now, about 14 yards to go. McLeod has gone out of the lineup. We have the other defensive back coming in, number 21, Charlie Hall for the Packers. A five-man deep secondary for the Packers, anticipating the pass. Quick trap, a good call against that particular defense. The loser can only find about three and a half or four yards out of it. That was also a good play by Carter, who was out in the middle of that line. He was uh, he played off Bob Jeebus, who was the Guy that's coming over to block on him. You mentioned the way Carter's come on. I really think he's as good as any middle linebacker in the business right now, John, and maybe the best. Third down and 10 now. The ball resting at the 33. Eddie Bell has come in, number seven, top of your screen. He will be challenged out there by Willie Buchanan. Out to the left is Barkham, number 83. Flags fly again. Barkham is open, but it's overthrown. Ellis back there. Covering along with Jim Hill. I don't think Boozer got set in that backfield, Frank, for the snap of the ball. I believe it's going to be a motion penalty for the Jets. They were trying to get off on a quick count. That's exactly what it is, and it will be declined because that will bring up fourth down. So, New York will have to turn it over to Green Bay once again. Once again, as New York has to punt, you saw Jimmy Hill over in beautiful position along with Kenny Ellis on the coverage on Barkham, and I was mentioning Hill's range. He was a marvelous pickup by Dan Devine his first year. They got him from San Diego in a trade. He's a fine young football player. Speaking of trades, Julian Fagan, as you see, came from New Orleans. As a rookie two years ago, led the National Football League in putting. He's kicking deep to... Kenny Ellis, who led the National Football League in return, but this will be fair caught by Staggers at the 39-yard line. 28-yard punt. A terrible punt. The pack has good field position, and they'll heat up the clock, you can be sure. Sooner or later, you're going to try a white owl. And when you do, 
We got you. Maybe we'll get you with a white owl mild, or the flavor, or one of our great shapes. But uh, we're gonna get you. You know we're gonna get you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No. I'm Joan Amos, and there's nothing I enjoy more than hot buttered popcorn. And nothing makes better hot buttered popcorn than the Hamilton Beach Butter Up Popper. It's the original automatic self-buttering popper. You just put the butter here, and you get the greatest hot buttered popcorn you ever tasted. Get the Hamilton Beach Butter Up Popper, and you can serve delicious hot buttered popcorn to your friends, too. The Butter Up Popper, from the Hamilton Beach Scoville world of appliances. Coming up on ABC this Thursday, September 20th, you'll see the battle of the sexes fought on the tennis court when dauntless Billie Jean King meets the self-proclaimed male chauvinist Bobby Riggs in a special match live from the Houston Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Don't miss it. Bobby Riggs versus Billie Jean King this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time exclusively here on ABC. First and 10, Green Bay moving from their own 39. Scott Hunter looking for Rich McGeorge, overthrown. That was a no close one, as they say. That one didn't come anywhere close. Might be for the better because he was fairly well covered. But that really is a way where some quarterbacks may have the ability to drill that ball in, and that separates the uh, good ones from the ones who are trying to get there. All right, it'll be second down and 10, and again, a makeshift secondary for the New York Jets. Chris Parasopoulos is out. Early Thomas is out. Sowles is replacing Thomas. Tannen replacing Parasopoulos. The draw to MacArthur Lane into the arms of Al Atkinson, gain of about two. Atkinson was just beautiful on that play. He read it instantly. Lane had nowhere to go. You mentioned Rich Sowles, who's replacing early Thomas tonight. Thomas, a cornerback of recognized quality. Let's look again as we watch Al. Read the play, move right into the gap, close it on MacArthur Lane, and do away with the would-be runner on that occasion at least. Somebody's supposed to block Atkinson. Uh, he did read it well, but you're supposed to have at least somebody out there trying to make a move, so I'd say there's probably an assignment messed up somewhere in the middle of that line. All right, third down and eight. The passing down. Stagger out to the right. Picked up there by Dallas Howell. McGeorge out to the left. Picked up by Souls. Oh, and Neal, Richard Neal, number 81. Another... Defensive man who the Jets traded for in the offseason, Neil, coming from New Orleans, made the stop. The Ten Jets, yard loss. The Jets are going to need a lot of that this year. One of the frequent criticisms of the Jets is the physical one that they don't have enough size in that defensive front four and they don't get to the pass and nearly often enough. The hope is that Neil, acquired from New Orleans, can repair some of that deficiency. Here's Ron Whitby. He was acquired by the Packers a couple of years ago from the Cowboys, former All-American basketball player. Nailing it, and it will be taken by Ferrisopoulos back at the 20. Rocky Turner with the block out in front. Good coverage by the Pack. 50-yard punt. Six-yard return, and hustling down there for Green Bay is Tom Toner. I thought Rocky had a good view of the scene. All right, with 11 minutes and one second remaining in the half, Green Bay. If you're accustomed to investing over $8,000 for a car, it's time you judged your car by our car. The 1974 Continentals. Lincoln Continental, Continental Mark IV. One way to judge a car is to ask its owners how satisfied they are. Last year, Continental owners were asked to evaluate their cars. So were owners of the other leading luxury car. While they rated some areas evenly, this national survey showed that Lincoln Continental and Mark IV owners were more completely satisfied with their cars in such critical areas as ease of driving, riding comfort, interior quietness, and quality of workmanship. No wonder another survey reveals that over the last two years, more than 25,000 drivers of that other luxury car have switched to the Continentals. The 1974 Continentals. Judge your car by our car. On a cool, breezy night in Milwaukee, temperature 51 degrees at kickoff time. The Green Bay Packers are out in front of the New York Jets, three to nothing. Bobby Howfield 
But the Chester Marco with the nine yard field goal, the only score thus far in a game that's seen a lot of penalties. All right, Riggins and Boozer are the setbacks for Joe Namath, who is trying to get things unleashed. So far, he's not been able to find his favorite receiver, Rich Castor, who just moved a little out to the right, but the handoff goes to Boozer. Boozer gets about four. You do expect to see a lot of excitement with Namath, and there's been none of that tonight. Reminds me of a piece I read recently in the L.A. Times by Bob Oates, the distinguished football writer there, about the prevailing defenses today and the monotony and sameness of the game that can result as a result of those defenses being predominant. Well, we shall see what we shall see. Second down and six. What did you say, Alex? I, I didn't quite follow that. I don't know. What did he say? I think it's a penalty is what I think it is. Penalty. All right, the play fake. Looking for Riggins. Riggins slips, falls, incomplete. He was up open there for a while. Running pretty fast up through the middle there. It was a <laughs> deep out. Oh, it was a little bit off, looked like to me. Deep grass got him about the 40. Let's see what happens. Here it is again. He's wide open right there. The ball's a little bit wide. He took one look to see who's around. Just couldn't quite get there. Naaman now four of seven for 48 yards. He'll have to put the ball up in the air again unless he chooses to go with the draw. And Green Bay has several times used the blitz on sure passing situations. Teddy Bell is in. Number seven, he goes to the right, will be picked up by Willie Buchanan. Now Barkham out to the left. He'll be single covered there by Kenny Ellis, number 48. Good matchups. And jumping off sides, number 74. Oh. Uh, He's out. <laughs> we heard that up here. No, no, he's out. That's Tony. Doesn't matter. Green Bay, as you noted, was offside. I was interested in that graphic our producer Don Allmeyer and our director Jess Gordy just had put up. Jets 0-3 on Monday Night Football. And they have been uh, continually failing on Monday night games. We opened our first Monday night game ever with the Jets at Cleveland. They lost 31-21. Second year, they lost to the Cardinals by three points. And last year, we had that thrilling wind-up game where Namath was uh, extravagantly brilliant in a losing cause against Oakland. <laughs> Aaron Brown jumped off sides for the Green Bay Packers. Five-yard penalty, third now, and one yard now for the Jets. They're moving from their own 34. 10-14 remaining in the half. Green Bay out in front, three to nothing. Packers just can't stay onside. It's got to have something to do. That's the fourth. That's the fourth, fifth time they've been onside. And it appears to me that they're jumping on uh, Joe's cadence. I don't know what it is. Maybe they can't understand that Alabama draw. They should. They got an Alabama quarterback themselves. Well, now we got that straight finally. The Packers again. That time it was Clarence Williams jumping offside for the Packers. Thirty yards now against Green Bay on six penalties. John Brock, a football player he's turned out to be. We have another great running back in our booth, along with the golden boy, Paul Horning. O.J. Simpson is with us. First and ten on the penalty. Ball at the 39-yard line. Rich Caster hit there by Al Matthews. <laughs> O.J. Simpson had yesterday the most extraordinary rushing day of any back in the history of the National Football League. And he'll be talking with us at halftime, along with, of course, our regular halftime highlights, beginning today with more games than usual because yesterday was the opening day of the season. So we've got a big show for you at halftime. Gain of about six. It'll be second down. And five, the ball resting just short of the 45 of the Jets. Eddie Bell back in the game, spread out to the right. This is John Riggins. Boozer with the block on the cloud. Boozer gets about three, stopped by Clarence Williams. Hey, McLeod really looks good to me. He's playing an outside linebacker. They lost a good one, went to Washington, but they've got a good one right there. And, of course, Robinson, who has done a fine job with the Redskins, and they're off and running again. You have them in the highlights, Howard? No, not this week. We couldn't put everybody in, and theirs was a one-sided victory. But many of the top games were in the end. 
Third down and three. The ball at the 41. Name it. Oh, down he goes. Good turn down. Number 74, Aaron Brown beating the block of Bob Swiss. Very good example, Franco. Defense being just right for a pass pattern that was called. They hit it very well. We saw Kenny Ellis roll up into the zone on this side. They tried to crisscross the receivers and ran right into it. There was no place to throw that ball. Joe had to try to improvise and didn't have time. Matt will bring on Julian Fagan. He'll be kicking to Kenny Ellis and John Steigers. Ellis on your left. Led all punt returners in the NFL last year. And Fagan really gets the foot into this one. This will be Staggers from the 15. Staggers out to the 18-yard line. Stopped there by Rob Spicer. 48-yard putt, four-yard return. We'll be back in Milwaukee. Right up. Hey, Colter, Primo, listen. Oh, hi, Mr. Dunahee. Like my new sweetheart, GE Portacolor TV. What a buy. And it's 80% brighter this year. How? They improve what they call the inline picture tube. Right, pal? This baby's one great performer. And for under $225, GE means value for your money. Oh. General Electric Television, the great entertainer. No one knows what the future holds, but inflation seems to be a fact of life. So when you invest for your retirement, you might consider variable annuities. It's just possible a variable annuity might help your retirement keep up with the cost of living. For a free prospectus, call your Aetna agent. He's got lots of ideas for your retirement. Aetna Variable Annuity Life. One of the Aetna Life and Casualty Companies. The Green Bay Packers will take over first and ten. They will move from their own 19. With 8.15 remaining in the first half, they leave. The New York Jets three to nothing. Scott Hunter going all the way thus far. The third year quarterback out of the University of Alabama. Here comes John Brockington. Dale Gillingham out in front. Brockington with a good pickup. Moving out to about the 24. The young man from Brooklyn forced that yardage, I'll tell you. Stopped momentarily at the line. He just forced his way up there. That's the way they are when they come from Brooklyn, Frank. You'll recollect my series of successes there. <laughs> In oh. Brooklyn? Oh, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is the first game. I don't know whether I can take it, Frank. <laughs> All Eastern Parkway. Seven straight years. Second down at four. The ball at the 24. Gary Smith has come back in. He's split out to the left. And Brockington hurtling over the 25 to about the 26. Hit there by John Little, number 57, with help from Richard Neal, number 81. I'll tell you, this Jet defense has really been exceptionally good, I think, against the run. I was expecting the uh, Packers to have much more success running, no matter what kind of defensive alignment they played, but these guys have been buckling in there pretty well. Well, the pack has geared their, the Jets have geared their whole defense to the pack running attack. Now, if the pack really had a good passing attack, they could kill the Jets, in my opinion. Give you a clue as to whether they like the pass or the run. We have a third down and three. Ordinarily, that would be the pass down for most teams, but the Packers will run it. MacArthur Lane will not make it. Do the pass, huh, Greg? Up to the 21, hit there by Mark Lomas. There's Joe calling one of his honeys. Nope, she's not home. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? You're straight ahead, remember? <laughs> Why can't you get you guys fired up for uh, some reason? Okay. Well, there's too many penalties. That's oh, there's all right. too many penalties. I knew there's there's also no offense. Well, there's going to be some. Uh, you ever remember the old fake punt? The well, Chicago Bears fought it yesterday. First time it worked, the second time it didn't. And Dallas won. Abe Gibran was a hero in Chicago before the game, and they really got on him after the game. That's showbiz, man. Parasopolis on your right. Whitby. And Ron gets the foot to it. Back to the 26, Parasopolis. And he can't quite get around the corner, but he gets out to the 37. Hit there by Tom Toner. Tom Toner having a good night on special teams. 48-yard punt, 10 yards return by Parasopolis. Green Bay, out in front of New York, three to nothing.
the radial tire. Before you buy one, you should know they're not all the same. Some of them have a polyester cord body for smooth ride, and some have tough double steel belts for extra strength, and some have a computer-designed tread pattern to hold in the wet, and some have special outside grooves for precise cornering, and some have steel sidewall stabilizers for positive control. But of all the radials made today, only Goodyear has them all. Before you buy a radial, look at the Goodyear Custom Steel Guard, the radial with all five guards to help protect you five ways. Steel Guard, the only steel belted radial offered as original equipment by all four major U.S. car makers, only from Goodyear. Big week on ABC television, Rosemary's Baby, hailed by the critics as a classic suspense movie, comes to television for the first time. Mia Farrow stars in Rosemary's Baby, Saturday night at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time, right here on ABC. And of course, Bobby Riggs and Billie Jean King, Thursday night from Houston. First and 10 for the Jets, moving from the 36. Caster, and he can't hold on to it. Did he have possession? I don't know. And rule the fumble. I think that was a very good call, because he did have, it looked like to me, let's take a look, let's see if we can see it again. Rich Castro on the left of your screen. Turn in. That ball's right there. Between the eights, he's got it. It was Willie Buchanan who led into him, Don. You bet, and he came out, he was, they were both there. That was, uh, I think that was McLeod that came out too from his linebacker position. In any event, fumble, another turnover, another mistake. Has not been a smoothly played game. Not one of your thrillers, but Green Bay is out in front three to nothing. They have a break now. They have a first and ten from the 48. Here comes Brockington, and Brockington starting to turn it loose. Picks up three tough ones. Into jet territory, the ball at the 47. There's Jim Hill, who recovered that fumble, forced by his teammate, Willie Buchanan. He's always around the football, as I suggested earlier. Boy, those kids in the Green Bay secondary are great. It'll be second down and six. Here comes McArthur Lane. He can throw, and he picks the rock. Man, Larry Smith was wide open. Yeah, he couldn't throw well enough, because he did have oh. Smith back about 10 yards behind everybody. Paul Horning just jumped out of the booth. Yeah. I'd say there's a big opening over here. This right quarterback, if they want to hit it, that little old square out move, the one they called a little bit earlier. Here's Barry Smith forcing that rod, and there's nobody there. Because the lane wasn't even trying to throw to him. You see, Smith says, wait a minute, man, look at me. Horning was upset, of course, because he was so brilliantly effective always throwing the option pass. Oh, I don't know about that. I Only was, Gifford could emulate him, and they both miss more often than they execute. Eddie Reeves is better than both of them. <laughs> Third down and six. Fifth man into the Jets secondary. Chris Ferrisopoulos. The draw play, a good call. MacArthur Lane, the first down. He's inside the 40 to the 37. Super call. It was, Frank. I, let's just see it again. It's either draw or a quick trap. I think it's really like a quick trap play. You see that guard pulling out. They're coming through the middle, they got some flow. You see Baker was a little bit out of position coming through there. That's McArthur Lane picking up a very big first down. Dan Devine on the sidelines. Devine got it. Back is back. He's quite a record. We'll tell you a little more about that later on. 16 years as a head coach before he decided to get the headaches of pro football. Here comes Brockington on first and 10. McArthur Lane out in front. He runs into Al Atkinson, number 62. Gain of about one. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Right now, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Well, that's the rookie, Gary Pitt from Valparaiso, who the Jets are high on. Nobody expected anything from him when he reported to training camp. He was a low draft choice, showed versatility, could play either guard or tackle. He's taken away Dave Herman's job. Second down at nine. The ball at the 35. Scott Hunter looking for Garrett, and 
Garrett got into the traffic down there. Glenn Garrett, I believe. Frank Lynn Garrett, one of those little oddities, went to New Mexico Highlands, not related to Carl Garrett, the back now with the Bears from the New England Patriots, who also went to New Mexico Highlands. Again, not related, but curiously the same name. Did a fine job filling in for McGeorge last year when McGeorge had knee surgery. And now Dandy Vine is using them both. And I'll tell you, the Packers use about two thirds of their offense to use the rushing game. And why not with Brockington, McArthur Lane? They were 10 and 4 last year, made the playoffs. All right, it'll be third down and nine. Ball just shy of the 35 yard mark. There's the draw play to Brockington. Big hole. Brockington very close to the first down. Stopped by Ralph Baker. Well, the Jets was stuck it twice in the same way. Once using McArthur Lane in the back, and once using Brockington. That is a good draw play. He sent over to the inside. They let the Defensive line in a little bit. And Baker again making that move. I don't know whether he made it or not. It's going to be very close. He bounced a little bit. He bounced to a first down. I'm a, I believe he's a little bit short. And he is about six inches short. Referee Bernie Ullman indicating, well, as you'll see, they get about 10 inches. And here's fans, what, of course, want them to go, Don. Yeah, they do. And this is why, you know, a while ago they were down on the one yard line. It's always tempting to listen to the fans. They want you to go for it every time. I'm surprised that they uh, are going for it this time. They play very conservative football. I guess he feels that another three is not what he wants. He wants six, seven up on that board to get out in front by touchdown. Well, he's got two big running backs that both averaged over four and a half yards last year for Curry. Good offensive line. Packers with the first real exciting moment of the ball game. Fourth down, short yardage. 311 remaining in the first half. Scott Hunter keeps it. Now, be that guy something. Yeah. Well, he's a good runner, too. <laughs> if he is, you've got a scoop. It depends really on where they put that one down. Who sure does? They're going to look at it again. Forward progress is where, where that forward, forward progress stops, where that ball is to be placed. It's going to be very close. Very close. It's first. Well, the Jets were stuck it twice on a trap and on a draw. And that's what cost them. They've made the key mistake, and the pack has been making the key play. And still, it's only three to nothing. Green Bay. And first and ten for Green Bay. They're on the Jets' 26 yard line. Tigers out to the left. Oh, and a big hole opened up on the right side of MacArthur Lane. Picks up six tough yards. Stopped by Ralph Baker. That was behind Gail Gillingham and Dick Himes. And that was straight zone blocking. And he did pick up a good six yards, good solid six yards. It's that kind of running these guys have been doing the last couple of years. Ah, oh, that Gillingham is a beauty. He's the holdover from the Lombardi era and those Super Bowls. He and Bob Brown and Ken Bowman are the only three left. Some have charged Devine with studiously getting rid of Lombardi people. Recently, Carol Dale was waived to Minnesota. And of course, Wayne Nitsky went into enforced retirement. But Dan Devine is doing his thing, and he's doing it his way, and he's making it work. Want thousands of surefire lights? <laughs> Get Cricket. The disposable butane lighter by Gillette. It's reliable, and it lasts for months. Cricket. Gillette makes it work. You got the undercover duty, Kelly. Mm. Shave close, but don't cut yourself. It's a dead giveaway. Sarge, this is the Track 2 razor. Two recessed blades. It's safer. Hey, my brother-in-law told me about that. How's it shaved so close? It's the Track 2 razor effect. It's my secret weapon. As the first blade shaves your whisker, it lifts it out from your face. Before it all jumps back, the second blade can shave it again, closer. What about twice old with my one blade raise? Uh-uh, whisker snaps back too fast. The Gillette Track 2 razor, the first razor with two blades. Gillette invented a razor with a difference. Some shave, huh? The face is terrific. That body. Come on, quit horsing around. That's the story from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Green Bay Packers out in front of the New York Jets. The only scorer thus far, Chester Markle, hitting from nine yards out. 
Packers, however, threatening with two minutes remaining in the first half. They have a second down and four. The ball just inside the 20-yard line of the New York Jets. There's a look at Scott Hunter, who has just been over visiting with head coach Dan Devine. Scott Hunter not having a good night, not having a bad night. Now this Saturday, the NCAA and ABC Sports will be combining to bring you the following regional football games. Michigan State versus Syracuse, Oregon at Air Force, Oklahoma State versus Arkansas, and New Mexico at Texas Tech. Check your local listings for the time of the game in your area. That's regional NCAA college football this Saturday, and of course right here on ABC. You know, interestingly enough, it was John Brockington that went over 1,000 yards last year. MacArthur Lane had a little over 820 yards, but Lane has had the better preseason. He really has looked sharp. Okay, second down and four. Hunter looking for McGeorge. Touchdown. Gets McGeorge beating Steve Tanner. I don't know whether they had it planned that way, but they caught him in a blitz. Frank, so he had him man to man back there. Howells, that's... Uh, that was really the place that uh, has been a little bit loose tonight. Looked like to me, Rick and George came through, did a good job. They were in a blitz. Here it is again. You see it, man-to-man -man coverage. It was not over the head of number 21. That was Steve Tennant coming over the coverage. And Rich McGeorge has proven that he is back from that knee surgery of a year ago. Chester Marco now on an attempt to make it to nothing Green Bay. And that is what we have. One minute and 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Green Bay extends the lead of the New York Jets, 10 to nothing. Well, Howard, I know you're going to be in Houston, the Astrodome, Thursday night. Think Bobby Riggs will show up? I think Bobby Riggs will show up. I'm beginning to wonder about Billie Jean. I think she's a great, funky, sparky girl, a marvelous competitor. But I'd like to have seen her giving out with a little more spark vocally registering some degree in your phraseology of vocal truculence, Frank, prior to the set. Don't you worry about her vocal truculence. She's going to be there <laughs> playing, and I'll guarantee you, she, just, she says it, she's going to do her talking on that court. I, I like that. You don't have to talk a lot, Howard. Margene Atkins on the left, Cliff McLean on the right. I'd like to see her beat her, even frankly. You yeah, know I think a lot of it would. There's the kickoff. This will be Atkins. On the one-yard line. And he runs into a lot of Packers and goes down at the 18-yard line. Larry Krause was there first. 17-yard return. He leaned into a couple of them. All right. I'm sorry, Giff. They're a huge team, Green Bay. I think one of the reasons that the Jets were penalized twice consecutively for holding that. That forward wall of Green Bay's is just huge. And the Jets are a smallish team, really. Those and two tackles, McCoy and Brown, go 550 pounds. I'd hold them, too. All right, the Jets have a minute 49 to use. That's what remains in the half. They trail 10 to nothing. Namath putting it in the air, going out to Barkham, and Barkham jostled there by Kenny Ellis, but no interference call. Well, Aaron Brown, 74, who's a backup man, really, for the pack. He was a great player in his earlier years with the Chiefs. He's still an effective backup man. Was in on Namath very quickly. Namath was having trouble even seeing this season. That is true. Bob Swias blocking on the left side of the line against Aaron Brown is not having what you call your basic good night. He's had the flu, I understand. He's lost about 10 or 15 pounds lately. That might have something to do with it. A lot to do with the mammoth headache. Second down now in 10. This is Riggins. We'll go nowhere. Mike McCoy. Submarine. Jimmy Carter, too. Aaron Brown again. This is really a tough call. It's third down. You In that two-minute drill, the two-minute period, Ordinarily, you want to work to the sidelines to stop the clock. Of course, Green Bay knows that, too. The place that's going to be most open is going to be the places down the middle, which means that clock's going to continue to run. You'll have to use one of your timeouts, assuming you could complete it. Let's see what Joe does. Third down and nine. The ball resting just short of the 20. 
Jeff throwing surprising, surprisingly little offense, considering the great receivers they have. So again, with just barely the time to get it off, and it's intercepted, but out of bounds by Kenny Ellis. Once again, Frank, and I'm not making excuses for Namath. Heaven knows it's a bad evening all around for the Jets, but he had trouble with his vision there. He was impaired by green jerseys, right? No question about it. Fourth down again, New York. They will have to turn it over to Green Bay. 56 seconds remaining in the first half. And Brown goes up there pretty good. He's the man that's been bothering Namath. Namath has been trying to work to the left side. Aaron Brown is 6'5". Julian Fagan. Aaron Brown, you'll remember, was a significant factor in the Super Bowl game of 70 against the Vikes. Mike Fagan will be kicking the two deep men for Green Bay. Ellison Steigers. This is John Steigers with the fair catch call. At the 42. 35 yard punt. Now, Green Bay will have 49 seconds to extend their lead. They lead 10 to nothing. 49 seconds remaining in the first half. And with Chester Markle capable of great distance kicking, Scott Hunter won't have to move them very far forward to put them in field goal position. Halftime uh, will be. Missing with the man who broke all my records at USC. He broke them all in one game. O.J. Simpson, who had that incredible day yesterday. MacArthur Lane. Gets up to about the 47. Stopped by Al Atkinson and John Little. In this whole first half, the Jets have engineered only one drive. That was early in the first quarter, Frank, you'll recollect. When the uh, drive broke down at the Green Bay 20, when Jim Nance failed to pick up the blitzing John McLeod, then perhaps an ill-advised call on a reverse from Namath to Richard Castor resulted in a further loss. Outfield missed a 41-yard field goal attempt, and the Jets have done nothing offensively ever since, despite their vaunted reputation profit. The pack has hardly been scintillating. But they do chew up the clock. They do grind out the yardage. And oddly, that touchdown was made on a passing play as for all their major games. This used to happen to Meredith. He would be blasphemed by the fans of Dallas. And they would never give him credit for his subtle talents that were not obvious to the fans, but were nonetheless there. Amazing how many games you saw me play. <laughs> it is amazing. The Jets have got to put it together in the, back, in the second half, Howard, to get this thing going. Uh, I don't really, I'm just sitting here wondering, how, how can you shut them out for one half? I guess it's just with a good defense. One of the things that's happened this last drive, he's not getting a, a lot of time to throw, and he's not getting a lot of real good running. So, you know, if you don't get a little running, a little blocking, it's going to be hard to complete those balls. 43 seconds remaining, and it's second down along seven. The Packers moving from their own 47. Hunter, who is four for seven, Gets it away, it's complete. Barry Smith, the number one draft pick, second leading receiver in college football last year from Florida State. And he caught that on Rich Zell, number 46. We saw Rich two years ago, fellas, trying to hold on to Johnny Gilliam, number 42, then with the St. Louis Cardinals, and the turning point in that game was Zell's inability to handle Gilliam. One of the things that was key to that completion, in my opinion, was the time that he did have the throw. He had good protection that time, again, by the Green Bay Packer offensive line of Bowman, Luke, Hayho, Gillingham, and Himes. But that really is a key to it. You get a guy, time, and Barry Smith, who has good moves, he has good speed. Man to man with somebody like that, he's going to get open. That was a good throw by Hunter also. That may be, but the plain fact is that for a long number of years, the Jets have had trouble with their defensive secondary. We felt that the whole thing was repaired this year through the acquisition of Dallas Howell and a brilliant young rookie, number 22, Burgess Owens, from Miami. But one injury to Early Thomas, and, well, heaven knows how much Rich has improved since we saw him two years ago. He's not uh, a player of reputed distinction. And Steve Tannen was beaten badly by Rich McGeorge, so they still appear vulnerable in the second day. All right, a close look at Burgess Owens. 
First down and 10 now for Green Bay. The ball at the 32. Scott Hunter now 5 of 8 for 98 yards. Mary Smith back out to the left. Again against Sowles. This time we're going for John Staggers. And Dallas Howell almost took it away from Staggers, but he couldn't hold on to it. That was a very un-Green Bay-like call. See him in position there, just sending Staggers deep. Howells did not let him get deep. He was 10 yards back. It's that area inside of Howells that's open. And Staggers, the ball was a little bit underthrown, as you can see. He's coming back. If he was another inch or two up there, he would have been able to get it. I don't think Howells had really a good chance for interception, but he did play it deep and was not going to let him get behind him. All right, 29 seconds now remaining, Don, and Green Bay has no timeouts. That could be why they will put the ball in the air. They've used up their three timeouts. All right, the draw play. Brockington hobbled the ball a little bit. Gets out to the 30. And Marco waiting on the sidelines. And Scott Hunter is going to have to stop the clock. The clock ticking down with 13 seconds. I don't really understand what's happening. Maybe they do have one timeout. Maybe they the don't either. running down. No, they just want it so there'll be no recourse. Just kick the field goal and let the half run out. All right, Green Bay stops the clock. <laughs> and on comes Chester Markle. Hillsdale College, Hillsdale, Michigan. Holds the NCAA record. Let's kick one for 62 yards. As I said earlier, he's made 11 of the last 13 in preseason. He'll be heading in from about the 37. Good piece of holder. Burgess Owen just about to do it. He didn't. Just a mark hole. Just going again. And as he does, the clock runs out. Chester Marco putting Green Bay out in front, 13 to nothing at halftime. Don't forget, stay tuned, interesting halftime show, the highlights and O.J. Simpson. Now, in the zenith tradition of dependability and picture excellence comes a whole new television system. New Zenith Solid State Chroma Color 2 with a more powerful solid state chassis, a unique voltage regulator to protect components, and an advanced chroma color picture tube. You get Zenith dependability and Zenith's best color picture yet. New Zenith Solid State Chroma Color 2. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. Georgie, you are about to see the investment idea of the century. Al. The electric fork. Oh, Al. I can get you in on the ground floor. Al, I've got my money invested in something else. More and more people are discovering savings accounts at Savings and Loans. The return is substantial, and your money is insured up to $20,000 by an agency of the federal government. Al, is this the same guy who invented the folding waterbed? That's not funny, Georgie. I almost drowned. Your Savings and Loan wants you to know how money works. See French Connection Cop Eddie Egan, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central Time. Yeah, yeah, you're in it. Hello. O.J. Simpson. Back at Milwaukee County Stadium, as you see the Green Bay Packers, almost methodically have taken a 13 to nothing lead over the New York Jets. New York Jets, with all the offensive punch that they have in the passing game, Joe Namath, Rich Castor, Markham, still have not been able to mount the offense. In the scoring, Markle scored from nine yards out with a field goal, as you see. McGeorge scored on a 20-yard touchdown pass from Scott Hunter. And then Markle came back with one second remaining on the clock and kicked another field goal from 37 yards out. But surprisingly enough, we have not had the offense that we expected. All right, let's look again at Scott Hunter sending both of his backs into the line. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Rich McGeorge 
working against Steve Tannen and Rich McGeorge, who had knee surgery last year. He missed 12 games, came back and did such a superb job in that first half. All right, let's go and visit with Howard Cosell and some pals of his. Okay, thank you very much, Frank. We told you earlier we were going to show you more games at halftime, more game highlights than usual. The highlights, of course, prepared for us through the courtesy of NFL Films and what a great job they do. So we're going to show you more than usual and we'll be talking with O.J. Simpson right after we wind up the highlights today. There were some great games yesterday, beginning with this one. Metropolitan Stadium, Bloomington, Minnesota, Oakland against the Vikes, and that's the Vikes quarterback, number 10, Fran Tarkenton, warming up for what proved to be a great game. This is first quarter action. The Vikes leading three to nothing. Tarkenton back to pass. Now not scrambling, but moving into the pocket, throwing deep to his favorite receiver, 42, Johnny Gilliam, who has beaten Alonzo Thomas, and the Vikes lead it 10 to nothing. In the second quarter, the Raiders had closed to 10 to 6, and Mike Eyshide punts for the Vikes. The ball is gathered in by 43, George Atkinson. Watch George closely. He half slips, appears to be downed, extraordinarily keeps his balance, moves on up, is almost tripped, but still keeps the balance. And now Atkinson is gone for 63 yards, touchdown. Oakland leads the Vikings 13 to 10 at halftime. As they moved into the third quarter in the early going, Oakland appeared to be on its way. La Monica back to throw long to the brilliant sophomore wide receiver, Mike Tiani. Look at that catch. And then the whistle blown dead, though Mike Tiani disagreed. But in any event, the play set up an Oakland field goal, and the Raiders led 16 to 10. But the Vikes stormed back, and now Tarkenton in striking position throws to the brilliant rookie running back from Miami, 44, Chuck Foreman, spins away from tacklers, scores 17-16 Minnesota. Bill Brown round, ran in for another touchdown. Minnesota won it 24-16 for a great opening day victory. Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City. That's Chuck Knox, the new young head coach of the L.A. Rams. And he's been working on a ground game. This play typifies it. Number 30 is Larry McCutcheon. Turning the corner for a good gain. He gained over 100 yards on the day. So did Jim Bertelson. In the second quarter, the Rams had a 6 to nothing lead when Johnny Hadel, number 21, dropped back to pass. And McCutcheon coming out of the backfield. Gone as it in. 31 yards. Touchdown. The Rams lead the Chiefs 13 to nothing. As the game moved along with just 30 seconds left in the half, Mike Livingston back to pass. The ball is picked off by Jack Reynolds, number 64. And the big linebacker rambles downfield. 49 yards to the Kansas City 29-yard line. Quickly, time called. The Rams move further downfield in the next 21 seconds. With just nine seconds left in the half, this. A slip, the ball taken by Priest on that fake field goal. He runs it in, 11 yards, touchdown. The Rams, 20, the Chiefs, nothing. And what an opening day victory for the Rams as they go on to win it, 23 to 13. A banner debut for young Chuck Knox who had come over from Detroit. The close-up of Garo Yepremian of the Dolphins warming up. The world champion Dolphins, the place is the Orange Bowl, the Dolphins against the San Francisco 49ers, and Matt Booth is for 52 yards. It came in the second quarter and put Miami ahead 6-3, to three. but then in the fourth quarter, the 49ers leading 13-6. to six. Creasy hits his favorite target, Warfield. The Dolphins keeping their poise tied it, then went on to win it, much in the manner of a year ago. The final score, Miami, 21-13. I'm Walt Garrison, and you know there's times when a guy just can't smoke, and that's when I'm glad I've got Scope. It's smokeless tobacco. Gives you real tobacco pleasure, but you don't light up. You just take a pinch and put it between your cheek and gum, and it sure feels relaxing in there. And man, I need something to help me relax. For tobacco pleasure without smoking, 
Millions of guys use Skoll, Copenhagen, and Happy Days. Ah, uh, well, I give 100% all the time. I believe that the game is played between those two white lines, and uh, after the game is over with, uh, I like to go in my locker room and feel like I can look in the mirror and say, well, I've given it all I got. That's why I like to use Brute, because it gives me 100%. It smells good. It stays with me a lot longer. Brute by Fabergé. After shave, after shower, after anything. On the field, I let my bat do the talking. Off the field, I let my brute do the talking. <laughs> Uh, there's a problem. She needs a new muffler. Oh, can you fix it right now? No, I'm all jammed up. Uh, you'll have to leave your car. How can I get to work? Hey, Ralphie, uh, give my friend a lift downtown. Uh, go ahead, Ralphie. This couldn't happen at Midas, because at Midas, we usually install a muffler in 30 minutes. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> at Midas, we're specialists. We have to do a better job. Yankee Stadium, New York City, the Giants against the Houston Oilers. That's quarterback Dan Pastorini of Houston before the game. He had a rough day. This action typified the day. Ron Johnson, the super running back of the Giants, breaking tackles there, slipping another there. He had a field day, scored two touchdowns. As always, he leads the team to victory when they win. And when they did, 34 to 14, they were ahead 13 to nothing in the second quarter at this point. Norm Sneed dropping back. What a year he had a year ago. Looking now to the end zone for number 85, Don Herman, the young man from Waynesburg. Herman corrals the football, 20 to nothing Giants. And as I said, they went on to an easy 34 to 14 victory. Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Alliance against the Steelers. That's Chuck Knoll, the young coach of the Steelers. And here are the Steelers in action. Frenchy Fuqua with the football. A rock'em, sock'em game. Look at that hit. Fuqua down by Levi Johnson, number 23 of the Lions. It's 10 to nothing. Steelers at this point. Third period. Greg Landry, number 11, throwing to the speedster run. Jesse, who's beaten the defenders. 84 yards, touchdown pass play. The score, Steelers 10, Lions 7. The Lions added a field goal to tie it at 10 to 10. And then, early in the fourth quarter, Terry Bradshaw back in the pocket, looking to his left downfield. What a catch by the tight end, McMacken. The Steelers go ahead, 17 to 10, and another touchdown. The Steelers with a brilliant opening day victory over Detroit. The score, 24 to 10. Soldier Field, Chicago, and that's Roger Staubach, number 12, quarterback, Dallas Cowboys. They're playing the Bears, of course. The score is tied at three and three. And Staubach now has his man. Otto Stowe, fired by trade from Miami in the offseason. The Cowboys go ahead 10 to three. This is in the second quarter. The action resumes. There's just 30 seconds left in the first half, and Staubach is ready again. This time it's to his old friend Bobby Hayes, and the Cowboys appear on their way. They lead 17 to 3. But then, in the third quarter, Marv Bateman punts for the Cowboys. The ball is taken in by Ike Hill, number 17. He keeps his balance. Now watch him go, turning the corner. What a block! He led his blockers there, too. You saw him point a moment ago. Nobody's going to get near him now. And it's suddenly a 17 to 10 ball game favor of the Dallas Cowboys. We're in the fourth quarter. It's the very first play. Carl Garrett, whom the Bears got from New England in another offseason trade. Straight up the middle. 15 yards. Touchdown. It's 17 to 17. The Bears are an improved team. Now we're late in the game. And the Bears pull a fake punt. And it doesn't work. It fools nobody. Gibran took the chance. He wanted to win the game, the Bears coach did. But instead, the Cowboys get possession, and they get good field position. Thus it was. Six plays later, the game virtually about to end. Pritch kicks the field goal for Dallas that wins it. The final score, Dallas 20, the Chicago Bears 17, Cowboys gleeful, the Bears terribly disappointed. Well, it was some day for this young man, number 32, O.J. Simpson of Buffalo. 
This team beat New England 31 to 13. He set a National Football League one game rushing record 250 yards and 29 carries. That was for 22 yards touchdown as he powered in. This one's for a lot more. 80 yards. Look at that. The way he slips off those blocks. And then he's gone. It looks like the University of. What an utterly fantastic day for O.J. Simpson, looking as he did at the University of Southern California. And of course, there he is, number 32, now the holder of a new National Football League one-game rushing record, O.J. Simpson of the Buffalo Bills. First of all, my good friend, as an ABC colleague, my congratulations, and those of Frank and Dandy and Chris and Jimmy and all the rest. Thank you, Howard. Matter of fact, too, there's something you wanted to say at halftime here tonight about what yesterday meant to you and about what last year meant to you. Well, of course, you know, yesterday personally it meant a lot to me, but it meant more to me as a team. You know, we lost a lot of games in the preseason, all six of them, and, you know, a lot of people in our town in Buffalo were sort of getting on us, and we said, wait till the league season start, and we won. You know, last year, uh, personally it was a big year for me because a lot of people were saying well when you're going to start doing something in pro ball and most people measure uh, success of a running back uh, uh, is a thousand yards you know so we got that last year Lou Saban came to Buffalo uh, after my third year a year that uh, I really didn't think I would be playing too much uh, in Buffalo I wanted to be traded but uh, when they told me Lou was coming I was glad to see him come because I know uh, the success he had with runners you know like Cookie Gilchrist and Floyd Lowe so when he came to Buffalo I was glad to see him uh, he told me to uh, you know just relax he would bring the horses in and of course last year he brought in Reggie McKenzie and Donnie Green was already there uh, Bruce Jarvis is there unfortunately he got hurt last year this year he drafted a, a few offensive linemen on the first round Joe Delamalier and Paul Seymour and uh, they've been doing an excellent job for us along with Dave Foley a guy we got from the Jets yes don't remind Wave Eubank of that at this particular heartbreaking moment for him trailing as the Jets do 13 to nothing at halftime but it was a soul satisfying thing for you because you had lived with a lot of people saying he could do it in college and not with the pros. Now with 250 in just one game, what do you anticipate if you stay healthy for this year? Well, if we can keep our linemen healthy, as I said, we have a lot of young uh, linemen, but uh, Jim Ringo, a guy who played here at Green, uh, at Green Bay, has done an excellent job with the guys. And uh, if we can stay healthy, uh, we feel we can win 10 games with our schedule. And to me, that's what we're after. We're after win. We want to win 10 games. We're a running football team. So if we get a lot of yards, you know, if we can get 15, 1,600 yards, that means we're going to win a lot of games. That would give you a wild card berth in the playoff. Well, we're delighted to have Buffalo and its new stadium on our Monday night schedule this year. We look forward to your game against the Chiefs, and so do you. Yeah, we're going to have a treat for you that night, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, O.J. I know that you got here on a plane two and a half hours late. Otherwise, this interview would have been taped, but we're delighted to have been able to do it with you live. Thank you, Howard. Continued success. Thank you. What a fella, and of course, a member of our ABC team. Now, announcing team, that is, O.J. <laughs> In any event, it's been a doleful first half for Joe Willie Namath because the score is 13 to nothing. He hasn't been able to put any points on the board for his team. However, he is very great as a quarterback in the Brady Bunch, or at least a segment of it that you'll be seeing this coming Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern time as he satisfies a little boy's dream. Let's watch. Hey, Joe, we've only got time for one more play. We need six big ones to win. This is it, Joe. You mean the bomb? The bomb. Okay, on two. Ready? Yes. 98, 77, 203, 207, 74,
Namath and some of his pals, the Brady Bunch. A look at the Milwaukee County Stadium. That's the situation. Joe has not found the opposition quite so friendly this evening. Green Bay out in front of the New York Jets, 13 to nothing at halftime. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the New York Jets versus the Green Bay Packers, is being brought to you by new right guard, powder dry, antiperspirant. The anti-stain, antiperspirant. And by Lincoln Mercury. See all the new 74s Friday, September the 21st. The Day of the Cat. And we'll be ready for the second half kickoff between the Jets and the Packers after this word from our local stations. Watch Rosemary's Baby Saturday night at 8.37, 30 Central Time on ABC. Just Marco, who has put six points on the scoreboard tonight. With the field goal, kicks off. This will be Martin Atkins, deep in the end zone. He'll stay there. Touchback. The Jets will take over, first and 10 on their own 20. They have been unable to generate much of an offense. They have no score. Well, let's see what they do now. O.J. Simpson is of the opinion, based upon Buffalo's experience a few weeks ago against the Pack, that the Jets should be running sweeps and try and tire out the larger Green Bay defensive line. As I said, they're a huge team, and O.J. said Buffalo had success with sweeps, which Namath has not been calling, apparently not in the game plan. All right, and as we watch Joe Namath, the setbacks are Riggins. John Riggins, who, keep in mind, has only had two days practice coming into this game. The other back is Emerson Boozer. Riggins fumbles the ball, and Aaron Brown misses, but big Bob Brown doesn't. Also got to see a Joe Namath block. So, John Riggins, perhaps the delay in his reporting to the contract problems might be showing. We saw him fall earlier. On a pass pattern this time, just that drops was a good pitch out. Yeah, we'll just hit him right there. He took his eyes off of it. Quite frankly, that contract problem was only one of many the Jets have had, and the Jets may be an unsettled team for that reason. Certainly, they have not looked like a disciplined, cohesive, fast-moving, aggressive team tonight. And this is the round that Green Bay likes to blitz on. Second and long yard. It's a second and 15. The ball resting on the 15. Here comes Boozer. Pets with a fine block. The rookie gives Boozer a good block, and Boozer picks up the first down over the 30 to the 32. Frank, they did have a blitz. It came from the other side that time. The Jets had the right play call. They went to their left. Boozer picked up some fine blocks. You look at it again. Here's Riggins leading the play. He gets a good block called Carter. I mean, uh, Carr, number 53, following right along in there. Well, how they did that. Pretty good runners right there themselves. Interesting that the block was thrown on Carr. That's one of the very things O.J. was talking to me about. He said you could run over Carr. Third down and or rather first down and 10. The ball at the 32. Atkins, one wide receiver, top of your screen, 26. Mark him to the left. And here comes Riggins. And Bob Brown forces the fumble. Picked up by Green Bay. Hill picks it up. Will it be brought back? Yes, it will. But Green Bay has recovered another fumble. Bob Brown was the man who made that responsible, the big 275-pounder, the eight-year veteran. Watch him come in and really pound Riggins. Well, that's two fumbles in a row for Riggins. Maybe that layoff did do something. It couldn't have helped him. That was Carter in there, too. I mean, Fred Carr. I'm calling him Carter. I'm sorry. That was Hill in there that did it. Scott Hunter at quarterback. Put Steigers out to the left. John Steigers, his setbacks. Two of the best in football. Here's one of them, MacArthur Lane, banging right up the middle, grinding yardage behind. Good blocking. Here's MacArthur Lane. Gets inside the 30 to the 29. Defensively for the Jets, they remain that front four. Ed Gallagher, 85. John Little, 57. Richard Neal, 81. Mark Lomas, 84. The linebackers, Atkinson in the middle, 62. Baker, 51. Ebersole, 55. Of the outside linebackers, Dallas Howell at one corner, number 20, Burgess Owens, 22, Steve Tannen, 21 of the safeties, and Rich Sowles is on the right corner, he's 46. Second down and three. Ball just inside the 30 of the Jets. Here comes Brockington. 
getting a good block from MacArthur Lane and how they do block for each other. First down inside the 25. Well, at the start of the game, Green Bay wasn't moving with that quickness, that precision on the ground against the stacked uh, Jets defense. They've gotten off much more swiftly here. Two plays, first down. Sheer speculation, however, but a lot of times a fumble will do that. You know, that old momentum we talk about that changes jerseys, that fumble right there, the Jets seem to have found something. They had a good long run by Boozer. And fumble, now the back is picked it up, and they're going the other way with it. First and 10 on the 24 for Green Bay. McGeorge and Garrett are both in the tight ends. And again, good yardage. Brockington this time, Scott Hunter in his third year out of Alabama, alternating his two strong running backs. Gained over 1,900 yards between them last year. Working behind a good offensive line, too. Ken Bowman is at center 57, Gillingham and the guards, Gillingham 68, Luke 62, and those two big tackles, Hines 72, Hayhill 77. Second down and nine, gain of one for Brockington. This is Lane. Oh, and what a terrific block by Gillingham. You bet you, man. You're right, Frank. You just talked about those guys up front. They are doing a good job. Gillingham is 68, pulling guard. Let's watch him. The Carter Lane's got the ball. And there is a shot. Man, took him from the top, took him all the way back. That was Howell coming up trying to force that one. I guess when you take on. That kind of a runner, you just get on and hope for the best. All right, Parasophos is in there now, Frank. You might make mention, you know, he didn't really start. He's playing right now. We saw him just briefly before the end of the first half. But his third down now, a long two. Scott Hunter with the play fake, looking for Rich McGeorge, and Dallas Howell was all over him. And I mean, he was all over him, but referee was right there to look at it. Chester Markle. Chester Markle emerges again. There's Rich McGeorge, the tight end from Elon College, number one draft choice just a few years ago. No, I didn't say anything illegal there, Giff. I didn't say it was illegal. I said he was all over him. <laughs> didn't think it was illegal. Uh, George was pushing him, but he slipped down a little bit. All right, Markle with Whitby holding. Markle has already hit from nine yards out and 37 yards out. This will come from the 24. Flags fly. Well, we'll see how this is called. Boy, that hurts. How many mistakes can one team make? Well, that's the story of the New York Jets tonight. Apart from the absence of continuity of offense, any continuity of offense, their mistakes have been consistent. You know, the Packers jumped off sides four times, and that was just taking advantage of those mistakes. It's really doing. I thought the Jets would be able to do that, I guess, on two different occasions. The Packers jumped off sides and gave the Jets first downs. They couldn't do much about it. Let's see if Green Bay can. All right, New York has been penalized four times for 37 yards. Green Bay six times for 30 yards. First and 10 now for Green Bay. They're up to 12 of the Jets. They lead 13 to nothing. We're just underway in the third quarter. Here comes Brockington. Gillingham with a great block, Luke with a great block, and Brockington down to the six. You see those knees pump once he got that hole with the aid of that block, the acceleration. Mm. If we see this again, I, you're going to see classical guard put play. Bill Luke 62 and Gillingham 68. Look at that. Now the late Vince Lombardi would have loved that. Yes, it's his football. Now look at that. That's what I meant. Yeah, not bad running. Not bad. They're well drilled. This team is put together. Gain of six, second down and four. Ball at the six. MacArthur Lane, very close to the first down. Stopped finally by Richard Neal and Al Atkinson. They play your alma mater in a couple of weeks. Should be a good game, Frank. I see it as no contest, Harry. <laughs> you may be right, but with the wrong team. 
Oh, the Giants have really put it together. Yeah, they're a vastly improved ball club. Incidentally, one game we really wanted to show the fans tonight was Denver's upset victory over Cincinnati. We apologize to the folks of Denver logistically. NFL Films simply couldn't get it from Denver to Philadelphia in time and then feed it to us. Third and a long one, particularly that guy that threatened you. <laughs> All right. Lane, too close, or rather Brockington. Brockington pounding in there. Baker's there. Along with Gallagher. And he will not have it. No, didn't make it. Don, I wonder if you'd explain as we watch this play again. No. Now, the Atkinson's guys get in there at middle linebacker position. They couldn't get out to block on him. Baker is in there, and Gallagher is in there, too. He just had a get. There was not enough people in there. Too many people were there. Not enough of them were blocked, so they're a little bit short. What was it you want me to explain? I want you to explain to the folks in Cincinnati that we'd love to do a Monday night football game from Cincinnati. We've got a whole host of telegrams here, but we don't make up the schedule. The person to write is Alvin Pete Rosell, the beloved commissioner of the National Football League. I thought you did have a lot to do with it. <laughs> All right, short is Brockington, so Chester Markle comes on. He will kick from the 10. He's two or three for the night. One a nine yarder, one a 37 yarder, and now one from 10 yards. Burgess Owens with pressure. Little Dave Mark chip shot. Chester Markle hitting from 10 yards out to extend Green Bay's lead to 16 to nothing. We'll be back in Milwaukee right after this message. What has Sheraton done for you lately? Sheraton's been building your resort hotels on the world's most beautiful beaches. From the Puerto Rico Sheraton on Condado Beach to the Maui Sheraton in the Hawaiian Islands. So before you head for the beaches, set yourself up at a Sheraton. Just call 800-325-3535. That's what Sheraton's done for you now. You know what it costs to put a new engine in a car like this? About $400. You know what it costs to put in a new Fram oil filter when you get your oil changed? About $4. Now, if the guy who owns this car had done that regularly, chances are I wouldn't be here now doing this. Well, the choice is yours. You can pay me now or pay me later. John Brockington. In his rookie year, he went over 1,100 yards. Last year, he went over 1,000. He has 46 tonight. Great All-American from Ohio State. And Chester Markle is having himself a night. He's hit from 10. He's hit from 9. He's hit from 37. He'll be kicking deep to Margene Atkins on the left and Cliff McLean on the right. The Jets unable to mount any sort of offense. Packers, probably responsible for that, but this is Cliff McClain. And he'll get down. Oh, and all kinds of <laughs> they just, he, he, grabbed he wasn't it. very sneaky about that. I think it was Larry Krause. We'll yeah, wait to see. It really was. Larry Krause involved in some sort of a collision there with the Jet. <laughs> I don't know who that was, for sure. <laughs> kind of funny, though. Was. Holding against the Jets. All right. We're keeping an eye on. That's three times, Don. It's Kenny Ellis game. there. We're watching Kenny. He's playing what's your, he's your safety, safety valve. He's in. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny's been on those kickoff teams before, man. That gets smart. I'm going to give him a lot of credit. Don't run down there and run into everybody just on purpose. My goodness. A little reminder, tomorrow night you can see the action-packed drama based on the exploits of the famed French connection detective Eddie Popeye Egan. The ending will leave you breathless. So tell me, watch Egan tomorrow night at 8, 7 o'clock Central here on ABC. First and 10, New York. No points in the scoreboard. They trail 16 to nothing. 906 remaining in the third quarter. Namath firing low over the middle. Rich Caster comes up with it. 12-yard gain, first down, the Jets. He blitzed that time, Frank, which gave a little bit of man-to-man -man coverage back in that backfield. Well, they know what they're going to see, I think, from now on. Don Joe knows he has to put the ball in the air. Yeah, he's in lots of trouble. We're trying to figure out what's happening to the Jets, as you mentioned before this, this last kickoff. 
I think the defense has had an awful lot to do with it, but they really haven't looked too sharp, Frank. It seems like even their cadence are not going off at the same time. There's oh. something a little bit, a little bit off there. They're not a cohesive football team, at least not at this point in the season. Anything but. From the 24 on first and 10. Thrown low to Jerome Barkham incomplete. I will remind you that Rich Castor can turn a football game around quickly. He caught 13 passes during preseason. One of them was an 85-yard touchdown. The other a 73, a 72, and a 42-yard touchdown. This Green Bay team with its defense is a hard team to do that against. I'll tell you, Frank. And when a team has had the holding penalties the Jets have had and the fumbles, Riggins two, Castor one, Boozer one. Hard to make a case for them. I'm just making sure Don didn't doze off. I'm over here. I'm in good shape. Second down and 10. Ball at the 24. Markham out left. The draw fake to hold the linebackers. Rich Caster turns the corner and gets up to the 41 yard line. Ran out of bounds there by Al Matthews. Oh, that's pretty. That was one where the receiver never breaks stride. And Frank, that's, that's really something. You know, that's got to be fun to catch when you run out there. Let's see Caster come from his. Tight end position. He was in flank a little bit close. Wow, coming across the middle. Never broke stride. The ball's there. That's pretty. That's pretty. To me, it was just a replica of what you did so many times. You're right again, Howard. You do Caster. know a lot. Caster with four receptions, 48 yards on the night. First and 10, another first down for New York. Going deep Go for Barkham. It's a little bit of a butterfly, and... Ellis and Barkham watch it as it's out of bounds. I don't think you'll complete many, if any, of those against the Green Bay Packers, but not with that guy at the helm and what he's put together in just two years, Dan Devine. One of the problems, Howard, what you know is you disguise it so well with trivia. <laughs> oh, don't be bitter, Dandy. Second down now and 10. Ball at the 41. Frank Gifford along with author Howard Cosell singing Mr. Don Meredith. 804 remaining in the third quarter from Milwaukee. Green Bay out in front of the Jets 16 to nothing. Look out. Ouch. Right. That's Bob Brown. That. Bob Brown weighs 275 pounds. That has to smart. Well, again, they're getting good pressure on Joe. This was, uh, we'll take another look at it. It's really coming from everywhere. You see Brown, they were, he is the guy we mentioned earlier that they, they really count on to instigate that pass rush. He's big and he's strong. He went through the nose of the center that time, took Rasmussen with him. I said Randy didn't look forward to the evening's assignment with any relish. Well, Bob Brown was the MVP of the Packers last year. Oddly enough, played two years of semi-pro ball before he got to the Packers. Was an all-pro bowler last year. Third down now in 23. Namath will either have to go with the draw or the pass. He can expect a strong rush no matter what. Well, that's one of the light ways out. Gain of about six. Far from the first down. Strange call, Frank. Well, he might have been just a little bit shaken up from being pounded out there by Bob Brown and didn't feel that he could get the pass off. That, that could be it. Well, it's a terribly conservative call at this moment of the game. It's a, almost a give up call. All right, Julian Fagan on to do the punting. Ellis and Steigers have dropped deep. Fagan kicking again to Staggers and coming down was Robert Woods, the number two draft pick. To make the tackle, the flag goes down at the 35, 34 yard punt. There's the foul clipping Green Bay. Well, wow. those legs look familiar. Of course, Kareem, Abdul, Jabbar, Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks in training for the forthcoming season, and Jabbar, as always, the positive fulcrum of their hopes for a title. 
Maybe Namath could use Jabbar in there as a wide receiver. Just throw it up in the air, alley oops fashion, the way Tittle used to, Frank, to R.C. Owens. Not be able to throw it that high. All right, we'll return. Well, a little confusion down on the field. Well, how's it going so far, Frank? <laughs> well, it's going awfully well for Chester Markle to recap the scoring. Markle hit early on a nine-yard field goal to make a three-nothing Green Bay. Then McGeorge scored on a Scott Hunter touchdown pass from 19 yards out. That made it 10 to nothing. Markle came back and made it 13 to nothing. Just before the half from 37 yards out. Then he put Green Bay up on 16 to nothing with a 10 yarder a few moments ago. Green Bay again with the ball. This time Hunter hands off to Brockington. Again, that good blocking. Wow. Well, that's what happens, Frank, to a smallish defensive line, even if you five man line it. Hey, there's a great shot of the crowd here at Milwaukee County Stadium, taken from our Goodyear blimp. The attendance tonight, by the way, 47,124, 759 no-shows. Taken together with the startling number of no-shows yesterday, over 50,000 no-shows for the first 13 games since the blackout was constitutionally lifted. A year ago, only 21,000 no-shows with the blackout. A little bit frightening. Second down and three, MacArthur Lane. Turns the corner and Burgess Owens, the rookie from Miami, the number one pick of the Jets, comes up to make the stop. Lane gets maybe a yard. Dan Devine, 16 years as a college coach, 13 of those at the University of Missouri. Next to him is Raleigh Deutsch, the assistant coach who has succeeded Bob Starr and who's calling the signal for the Green Bay Packers, play by play. All right, here's a down that's kind of interesting to watch Green Bay. Third down, a long two or three. Ordinarily, you'd expect a team to pass the ball. Green Bay has not done it all night. Of course, they do have a 16 to nothing lead. But they have confidence in the running game, and here it comes. Gillingham again with that big block, and good pursuit, however, by Ebersole. Elliott now in the game for the Jets. Number 80 also moving over from tackle. Well, we'll see. Did he make the yardage? And we'll see with the measurement. Referee Bernie Altman there, Frank number six. You can see the change. That's the umpire Tom Hensley. Altman broke some ribs last week in a game, or two, I guess it's two weeks ago. He was talking about it before this game. He says, man, I, the guy was scoring for a touchdown, and I had my arms up in the air, signaling the touchdown. Came right across and got broken ribs. Tough all over that field out there. It is a dandy vine in his first game in the NFL. Broke had his, his leg broken yeah. on the sidelines That's as true. a coach. Best block, Bob Hyland. Now the Giants have a throw. <laughs> oh, you're oh, ugly. Howard. No, he. Howard. Bobby's a nice boy. He was a classmate of my son-in-law's. One of the. That won't get you out of it. No, that's not going to get you off. Bobby. Oh, no, that was an ugly thing to say. No, totally it wasn't. uncalled for. Oh, no. Absolutely, well, that's not the best block he ever made. Number one draft pick for Green Bay. Had to be pretty good somewhere. Oh, and Burgess Owens almost gets it, and what a tremendous kick. The Ferris Hoppers with the field at his own 15. High, and was it ever long? Down there to cover, Mike Donahoe, 56-yard punt by Whitby. Five-yard return by Ferris Hoppers. We'll return to Milwaukee County Stadium, where the score is the Packers 16, the Jets 0, after this brief message. I own this station. I'm doing all right, you know, getting by. But I got to do better. You see that record? Brand new. And I got to pay it off. And I got a wife. And she's got a mother. <laughs> Does she got a mother? I mean, if she doesn't go to Florida to see mother dear, I got a slight domestic problem on my hands. So you come in here, I can be very friendly. Right? All right. I'm going to wash your front window. I'm going to wash your back window. I'm going to wash your side view mirror. I'm going to wash your hands if I have to. And I'll tell you something else, brother. 
You get yourself a Sunoco credit card, and you'll get special deals from Sunoco on just about everything I sell here. Look, I'm not doing these things to, to be Mr. Nice Guy. Like I said, I get the station, the wrecker, the wife, a little problem in Florida. <laughs> so try me. Go ahead. Try me. I can be very friendly. Huh? <laughs> hey, boss. Florida calling. Collect. Everywhere we go, we get the signs. That's Two kind of unusual. Two great heads. Two great heads. Howard and Milwaukee, Milwaukee Beer. See there, there, Howard? You run up there with the, be right the best stuff. Watch Joe Willie get creamed by Big Dream. Well, somebody was a prophet because Joe Willie has had a difficult night tonight. First and ten now for the Jets. Namath will begin the movement from his own 20. Here comes Riggins. Swiss with a block out in front. Wiggins turns the corner. That's about two or three. Jim Carter moving over from his middle line back in position to make the stop. And mind you again that this Thursday night, the mouth, Bobby Riggs, goes up against Billy Jane King. Interesting match. It'll be live from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. You two guys are going to be down there, aren't you? Yeah, we'll be there. If Billie Jean can make Bobby run, she's got a real shot. Three out of five. That's a little different than the Margaret Court. I'm going with Bobby Jean. Second down and eight. You never heard, don't you? Back. Look at that. Great catch by Barkham. Flag goes down. What do you think that was, Frank? Was it offensive or defensive? Well, the finger was pointed, accusing finger towards Kenny Ellis. <laughs> Well, it was completed anyway. That was a big one for him. That'll get him back out of the hole. Let's watch it again. Parker made a good catch on this one. Pass interference ruled against Green Bay, and what a spectacular catch it was. And they well, I'll tell you, as a receiver, you know you're going to get pounded when that happens. You know, I didn't see interference that time. Looked like me he was going over the shoulder. and uh, didn't. I think it was ruled against Castor in front of uh, the play. Castor, oh, it was? I didn't see that. Okay. First and ten, the Jets. Moving from now, their own 42. Riggins, loser, the setbacks. Up to Caster, low, and he can't hold on to it. Al Matthews, covering for Green Bay. And look at how frustrated Namath is, disgusted with himself on that underthrow there. Not having a very good night. He's 9 for 16 in the figures with 106, 9 for 17 with 116 yards gained. But the fact that the passing statistics, the percentage of completions is over 50% doesn't mean anything. Not really with me. Dandy, excuse me, Art. Well, he's relatively placid there. He's got the game well in hand. Here's the down now. Green Bay has been blitzing. Top of your screen is McLeod, number 56. He's on the weak side. He's the man that's been coming on second along yardage. And it's second down and 10. Nope, they do not. And Namath going for Barkham. And a great play by Ellis. Oh, that was pretty. That's why they only gave up seven TDs last year. Frank is just great position. These guys have good quickness and speed, but that was he was with Barkham all the way. Barkham had about a step on him. It could have been completed had it been absolutely perfect. We've got to take another look at it. But man, that you just don't get that guy. He was right on him. Timing. I don't believe it could have been completed. That thing was in there perfectly. And another look from my kid. Man, we got cameras everywhere. Would you look at this Barkham run? And would you look at LS? Dipping that thing away. Beautiful play. You know, he's giving away six inches to Barkham. Great field position. Okay, third down and ten now. Eddie Bell has come in. Split out to the right. Barkham is out to the left. Ellis again with Barkham. Buchanan with Bell. Over the middle to Riggins. McLeod is there first. He makes the stop short of the first down. They're not sustaining anything. They really are not. For a team reputed to have such potent offense, they sure are not. 
I know it's just the first game of the year and they can develop in the later games but they've got a lot of developing to do and they've got to face up to it. Here's Julian Fagan. A team from New Orleans. Off season. He'll be kicking again as he has been all night to John Staggers trying to keep the ball away from Kenny Ellis. He's been very successful. Ellis of course led the NFL last year in punt returns. We'll be back at Milwaukee County Stadium right after this. Chauffeurs, airline pilots, car owners, a barber, a diamond cutter. You've seen people like these on TV demonstrating Mercury's great ride in test after test. But there'll be no ride test today. Today, a great ride is not enough. Today, you also need a car you can afford to operate. The 74 Mercury Marquis is designed to be that kind of car, with steel-belted radial tires, standard, to give you thousands of extra miles over non-radials. And Mercury is designed to save you time and money on scheduled maintenance with innovations like solid-state ignition. Incidentally, Mercury does not require premium gas. Today, a great ride is not enough, unless it comes in a car you can afford to operate. Mercury Marquis, the great ride, tuned to 74. At the sign of the cat. All right, Green Bay doing a methodical job with the New York Jets tonight. Nothing spectacular, nothing dramatic, but they lead 16 to nothing. Two minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Chester Markle with three field goals, one touchdown pass, Scott Hunter to Rich McGeorge. That's the scoring. The Jets have not even come close. First and 10, Green Bay moving now from their own 20. Comes Brockington, easing in there behind Dick Himes and Gail Gillingham, picking up his five or six yards. Well, we're looking at Tommy McLeod, the earlier identified rookie corner linebacker up from Minnesota, third round draft choice, was a significant figure early in the game, all over the field. And indeed, it was when Jim Nance failed to pick him up on an early blitz when the Jets engineered their only real drive of the evening that that drive was in effect stopped. McLeod getting to Nemeth and creaming him good. Second down and five. Lane now with 52 yards. Gets the call again. Gets up. Well, he maybe picks up a yard or two. Mark Lomas. Lose over Milwaukee. That's a pretty move. It's the first time in three Monday night games in Milwaukee, Dandy, that we've seen the moon. Pretty one there tonight. When was it, two years ago, that uh, Meredith tried to drown you and me under the umbrella, Frank? Mary Poppins, right here. About that's, three inches of rain that night. That was before I got to know you guys. You got to know us, you'd have drowned us, right? Yes. Yeah. Not a happy face. No, he's had a tough night. He's, he's got a lot of thinking to do. Third down and three. Scott Hunter with the play fake, looking for Staggers, overthrows it. Staggers was wide open. One of the problems I think that Dandy Vine is concerned with. They're going to have those pro a very real problem, it seems to me, against better teams, Frank. They're going to need much sharper passing. That'll be fourth down. Ron Whitby will come out to do the putty for Green Bay. Bob Swiss and a little stretching exercise on the bench. Sopolis led the AFC in punt returns last year. We'll get an opportunity from the 17. Crosby, Larry Crosby, as he always does on the Green Bay special team, down to make the stop at the 21. That Whitby is kicking Oop. the ball, isn't he, Frank? That's his second 56 yarder. He sure is. I wonder how Landry feels now about trading Ron away and going with Marv Bateman, the lad from Utah. Not that Bateman's a bad kicker, but I've always had great respect for Whitby's foot. I think Whitby beat Landry in golf one too many times. <laughs> Don't forget Thursday night. A match of, well, whatever you call it, it's going to be something. All kinds of color taking place in Houston in preparation for Bobby Riggs and Billie Jean King. First and 10, New York moving from their own 21. Markham 
moved out to the left by Namath. Lots of time to throw. Caster turned completely around. I think he lost sight of the ball. Al Matthews back covering, and Green Bay has been really covering these receivers of the Jets all night long. And of course, now they're playing drop back defense. You can't connect with uh, any, at least you can't have any reasonable hope of connecting with those long bombs. It's been said so many times it's a tired lexicon about the zone defenses and the diminution of the possibility of completion of the long bomb. But that's apparently what we're going to see now. <laughs> All right, look for more diminution. <laughs> diminution. Oh. I'm going to make you men articulate. <laughs> On second down and 10 from the 21. Beautifully thrown to Barkham. He catches a 39 first down. And boy, he threw that down before Barkham even broke. And before that diminution got him, too. I'll guarantee he was right on that one. He well, can't throw. And it'll be brought back. Here's Barkham again. The ball was, as you mentioned, Frank, was thrown before he made his cut, but that's why you spent a lot of hours before and after practice and during practice and working things like that. The timing. Looks as if the penalty is going to be against the uh, the Jets. No. What's a little the lines game? keeping problem there. They had moved the lines. The linesman had moved the line before the penalty was called. Right. The way they keep that thing straight, they think, oh, that's going to be too hard for me to explain. Well, I'll try. No, I'm not going to. But they do keep it straight with a little bit of ribbon that they put on that yard marker in between where these lines are going to keep. God, you're a good guy. motion against the Jets nullifying the fine game by Barton. On second down and 15. Looking again for Barkham. Right in the middle. He's hit hard but he holds on. Kenny Ellis slamming Barkham to the turf. Well that'll make a receiver think twice yeah, about the next turn. Well. He got up slowly and he's feeling it. Show you what a receiver goes through with this team. Jim Carter playing off Caster and getting into the field of the play. It'll be third down now and four. The ball at the 27. Joe now 11 for 20, 132 yards. Both backs circling out of the backfield. Good protection. Barkin doesn't hold on to this, but Kenny Ellis does. Ellis intercepting. Barkin getting back into the play to make the stop. Well, obviously that was a well-thrown ball. Ellis was right there, but a little bit behind. We'll watch it again. Here's Barkin. He's coming down. Ellis is with him. Right in there. Now, wait a minute, Barkin. Well, he didn't realize that Ellis had caught the ball. He was very disgusted with himself for dropping it because that's just what he did. I wouldn't want to say it, but I wonder if he was thinking about the time before that he had gone up in the air and caught it and was leveled. Now, I think that's a harsh thing to say, Frank. I couldn't agree with you more, Howard. That's really ugly, Frank. Right? There you're going. How about that? Right, that's it. Okay. All right. First attempt for Green Bay. Take it back, Mrs. Barkham. Rockington, good hole, good running. Inside the 30 to the 27. As time runs out in the third quarter. Mark Brockington running out of his shoe. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. The New York Jets 16, the Green Bay Packers nothing. Wait we'll return after this word from our local stations. A sparkling comedy, Adam's Rib, Friday at 9.30, 8.30 Central. Away from the explosiveness of professional football, Tommy Nobis is a gentle giant quietly doing what he can to help retarded children lead a more normal life. If you can type, drive, talk, or handle a fishing reel, there's a way you can help. To find out how, call your local... John Brockington on the first play from scrimmage after that Kenny Ellis interception. Picks up his customary of four or five yards, and that's what he's getting used to tonight, both he and MacArthur Lane. The Jets now have turned the ball over three times to Green Bay. Green Bay has not had one turnover themselves this evening. 
It'll be second down now at five. The ball resting on the Jets 23 yard line. One touchdown in this football game, a pass from Scott Hunter, 19 yards to Rich McGeorge. The rest of it has been Chester Markle, 9, 10, and 37 yard field goals. The reverse to John Staggers, and watch out, the picket line is set. Oh, safe. <laughs> Staggers lost his footing at the 15, and it looked like for a moment he could go all the way in. There's the young man we looked at a few weeks back, Dandy. I suspect the long-term hope of the Packers for a Super Bowl championship. Jimmy DelGazo acquired from Miami, a southpaw quarterback, but a brilliant thrower. And a kid with enormous self-confidence, wanted to be traded, didn't want to sit behind Greasy and Morrow. I think he's got real big league ability. Amy got hurt, uh, Howard. He had really been throwing well that game, I'm told, and they do have a lot of promise for him. They hope he's back in there before too long. Staggers got the first down. It'll be first and 10 for Green Bay. They're moving from the Jets' 15-yard line. MacArthur Lane pounding the right side for a couple. John Elliott making the stop. Well, there's Weeb Eubank. Here's a man who's won it all in both leagues. Nobody else can make that claim. Whose coaching ability is unquestioned. But this is his last year. He wants to go out the right way. But you have to wonder in journalistic fairness how the problems of contract signings have affected him and this team. The Jets still have six unsigned players. Only within the last 10 days have four other key players signed. And they do appear totally uncoordinated tonight. On second down and eight, Don Highsmith, number 32, comes in as a setback. Scott Hunter gets hit as he releases it over the middle and almost intercepted. Dallas Howell in there to break it up. Yeah. Look, Frank, Don, you've both played a lot of years of pro football. What would be your thinking on uh, of the impact of that contract situation on this club? Really hard to say. I think obviously it's hurt Reagans as we've seen tonight. Uh, I'm not so taking sides one way or the other. I don't know the exact details of it, but it obviously hurt Reagans. We saw him fumble. We saw him slip on a pass when he was wide open. He wasn't ready to play football. I think it has to have a, a definite effect, uh, Howard, because it's uh, these guys are playing. They, they get paid money. A lot of them feel that they're not getting paid enough. So it's uh, I think it subconsciously has to affect their play. On third down and eight. Over the middle. Rockington holds on. How he did it, I don't know. That ball was one of the hardest places to catch it. You can see from a very good spot there. The throw behind him, he was going in one direction. It's a short pass, has to be thrown very hard. Fantastic catch. Parasopoulos was the man that administered the blow to Brockington. And Brockington is, stays in. Don Highsmith on the left has come back out of the game. Arthur Lane comes back in. Hunter now six of 13, 108 yards. Rockington dancing, looking for a hole, pecking along the line of scrimmage. Finally gets about a yard. Piled up there by the middle of the Jets line. Al Atkinson more than likely on the bottom of it. You know, the Jets have only been shut out four times in their entire history, and they're threatening tonight. We have 1135 remaining in the game. Last time they were shut out was back in 1971 in their fourth game. Hard to believe a team with the offensive explosion that they have shown really in preseason. Nothing else but Barkham and Pastor has not been able to get on the scoreboard. That's the case. They trail 16 to nothing. Second down and goal. MacArthur Lane hurdling and stopped short again. And I must say the Jets once before stopped Green Bay with the first down inside the 10. John Little, number 57, the bottom of the pile. I think they have to go outside. Maybe those uh, the Jets are really been clogging it up in the middle. They tried that before. I'd let if I was Scott, I'd keep it. I'd quarterback sneak it in. Third down. Call it a uh, call it a long yard. Rockington, no contest. Yeah, you were right. 
Sean Rockington gets his first touchdown of 1973. Superb athlete. Again, it's that just a sweep. They pull one guard. Rockington has the speed to go outside along with that strength. You know, they try to run him in there. There's Gillingham again, 68. Uh, but again, MacArthur Lane, too, cutting down That's that end. He didn't need Gillingham, but MacArthur Lane did open it up for him to get outside. Then he just had a foot race to the outside, and he can win a lot of them. I'll guarantee you. Okay, Chester Markle is on. Green Bay extends their lead of the New York Jets to 23 to nothing. 10:35 remaining in the game from Milwaukee. This Magnavox Videomatic Color TV does what no TV ever did before Magnavox. Right? Magnavox adjusts its own picture to changing room light automatically, constantly, to give you bright, true color. Plus, solid state and one-button tuning. Videomatic Color TV, a Magnavox exclusive. What a difference. Watching a Magnavox. Goodyear makes the going great for you. With custom power cushion polyglass tires, the same popular polyglass tires that are featured on many new cars. Only Goodyear makes polyglass tires. And now's the time to put your car on America's favorite double belted tire. The custom power cushion polyglass tire. Available only from Goodyear. You know, Just... uh, Frank, it's something to be having this new journalist here up between us tonight. I... I've read his book, most of it, I'd say. And it's a combination, I suppose, with Edgar Allan Poe and Jack Parr. <laughs> what do you think? Huh? It is a good book, Howard. I enjoy it. You, you, you have developed an astonishingly new culture and literacy. I'm well, it's all, it. all because of you. Mr. Marco gets the foot into it. Atkins will take it just inside the end zone. Margene Atkins. One of those days. 24 yard return. Kind of interesting, too. This is one of the few fields left, I guess, where they're playing on turf. And the NFL Players Alumni Group, headed by Leon Hart, have assigned uh, a group to study artificial turf as opposed to regular turf, injuries, etc. They are going to study all the studies that have been made and try and come up with some kind of results. Dr. Danny Portman's on that group, Dr. Bill McCall, and Bart Starr is there, along with Ray Nitschke. Okay, it'll be first down for the Jets. They're scoreless. They move from their own 25. Name it to Caster. Fred Carr back in the number 53. He was out. And his uh, linebacker drop caught, caught Craster when he came across. Look at it, 58. The cloud's trying to hold him up. You'll see Fred Carr, number 53, circling back. He knows this ball's coming in there. Wide open spot right there in the middle. Just doing most of their damage in midfield. That's just about the only place they've been operating. They haven't even threatened tonight. Here comes Riggins. Yeah. yeah. That didn't look too good. In perspective, the Packers have to be pleased about this evening. Not that they have been spectacular, as Frank pointed out. They've been methodical. But that defense is a beautiful thing to watch. And Dan Devine has to feel especially good because this is his third year in charge of the club. Last year, he rebuilt the club in two years and made the playoffs with it. The Giants are virtually doing the same thing. You can do it. In a 2016 league gift, you can do it with the draft and trade. All right, on second down and 10, Namath again getting wrapped up as he almost gets the ball picked off by Kenny Ellis. Kenny Ellis is really something on that cornerback. Watch him lay back. He was timing that throw. And a good defensive back will do that. He'll give you the appearance that that receiver is going to be open. He's going to lay back in there as Kenny Ellis did that time. Let the quarterback throw and make his move. He's a great athlete. He was great from the day he came up. As we mentioned earlier, he's a fine, fine kick runner. Turned the Green Bay Detroit game around that we did a year ago with a kick run for a touchdown. He's too much. 
Kenny Ellis and another pretty good character right now is Joe Namath. But the Packers know he's going to throw the football. They have really been popping him in this final quarter. Aaron Brown got to him on the last play. And yet he'll stand there and deliver it as he does to McLean. Over the middle, close to a first down is McLean. Tom McLeod, the rookie out of Minnesota, is there to wrap up McLean. That was a good catch, Frank. That ball was thrown low in there. McLean held on to it. Some of the fans here at Milwaukee didn't think he did. Watch him come out of the backfield. Check for a blitz. Coming in there. There's nobody there. A little bit low. Ooh. Cloud's making sure he's down. <laughs> I find McLean an interesting player. He's one of the six unsigned players, as you know, Frank. But a lot of people in the league think he has enormous running ability. Well, look at McArthur Lane, a happy fella. Important change for the Jets. Robert Woods, their rookie number two draft pick, has just replaced Bob Swiss, who has been having a difficult time all night with Aaron Brown. That's it, left offensive tackle for the Jets. Cutting both backs, and Aaron Brown got through Robert Woods. And he has been living on Namath all night long. Yeah, they may have I'll tell you, Aaron Brown is trying to earn a job. He, yeah. I don't know what has happened to Alvin Roche. We have seen him off and on. He usually is in that position, but we have seen much more of Aaron Brown tonight. I'll tell you, Aaron is playing like it's 1969 and he's with the Chiefs because he used to be a devastating defensive end, and he has been all over Namath tonight. Bothered by injuries in Kansas City, I know a couple of years. He did play great football for him. All right, second down and ten. Martin Atkins to the right. Jerome Barkin goes out to the left. Namath realizes he has to throw the ball. So does Green Bay. They come hard. Martin Atkins, did he hold on to it? No, he did not. He just got away from him. Willie Buchanan up for the coverage. In 1958, won his NFL title. Again in 59, and then, of course, there was the miracle of 68 with the New York Jets. Well, on January 12, 1969, changed the face of pro football. The Jets 16, Baltimore 7. Now look at this. This is what you can do when you know the team is going to pass. That's called, well, different, different names. They call it Tango, but that really is the end interchanging with the tackle and the rush. Very difficult to block. Third and ten. Fly goes down. Namath went down. Barkham came up with the ball. Obviously an interference call. Was it offense or defense? A couple of flags down, Frank. There's one back behind the line. It looks as if there's going to be a penalty against the Jets. The way they're kind of walking back with their heads down. And yet I don't know because there's still this holding against the Jets, holding against the back. Another sloppy game tonight, a lot of penalties. New York has had seven for 69 yards. Green Bay now has had seven for 45 yards lost. But the story is on the scoreboard Green Bay. Winners of the Central Division last year, losers to Washington in the playoffs, lead New York 23 to nothing. 7:48 remaining in the game. Name it on the sure pass down. Puts Atkins out to the right against Buchanan. Barkin goes out to the left. He's up against Ellis. Castor opens up to the right. He's against Matthews. Here comes Aaron Brown. Barkin is open. He holds on to it. Inside the 20, out of bounds at the 17. That was one time it looked like they either mixed up on that defense or they really did beat him because Kenny Ellis appeared to be just standing there. Let's see what Barkham did to him. He faked the turn in he and just beat Ellis. Move on him. That's, That's what it. he did. He faked that inside move. The ball was a little bit underthrown. If that ball had been up a little bit more, that could have had a touchdown because he was really behind him. Barkham was a teammate with. Caster at Jackson State. You can imagine the combination they were. Barkham was a sophomore. Caster was a senior. First down and 10. So far, the Jets' deepest penetration had been to the 15. They are on the factory 17 at the moment. This is Caster. 
And Caster moves inside the 10, down to the 7. Willie Buchanan made the stop. You get the feeling when you watch something like that that the Green Bay defense is they said, okay, we're going to bend back a little bit. We'll let you have a little bit of that stuff. We've got us a good lead. Clock's running. Let's see if they don't get pretty tough down here. There's Winston Hill. He was one of those who held out for so long. He, too, probably missed quite a bit of training. You're limited from a quarterback standpoint, Frank. When you're down here at 10 yards, and what kind of patterns you can throw because you've got that end zone to begin with. You only have 20 yards to work in. First and goal from the seven. With McLean out in the flat. And he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a yard. Driven out of bounds by Tom McLeod. I was saying earlier, I I find McLean an interesting football player. A lot of scouts in the league think he has enormous ability as we look at this play again. In fact, Cliff uh, gained 120 yards and 10 carries last Thanksgiving Day when the Jets lost to the Lions. Now there is Cliff. But again, he is still unsigned, and I suppose not a very happy fellow. And Cliff McLean goes off. John Riggins comes in. Second down and goal. Ball just short of the five-yard line. Looking for Barkham. Oh, and again, fine coverage by Kenny Ellis, fourth year back out of Southern University. He's had a fine night. He sure has. He's beautiful to watch. What position he had on Barkham. Namath now 16 of 30 for 202 yards. And no points. Exactly. Reagans has carried the ball, rushing two times. I'm sure that was by design by Eubank. He's only been working out two days. And he's only gained two yards. Third down and goal. The Jets trying to avoid the shutout. 5.56 remaining in the game from Milwaukee. They lead 23 to nothing. Try it again. And again, Kenny Ellis. Well, I don't know if it's good coverage or Barkham just couldn't hold it. But he was right there, Don. Well, you see Ellis, but that's legal. He's used his hands to keep him to the outside. He's getting inside position uh, on him. It's perfect. And that's where he wants to because uh, he's got that sideline to play with in there. All right, fourth down. No field goal attempt. Naturally, trailing 23 to nothing. Barkham goes out to the left. Let's see if Namath is well, just stubborn enough to go back to him again. Margene Atkins to the right. Riggins and Boozer pass to the other receivers. Yep. Uh oh. Three great defensive saves by Ellis. How do you figure those three calls? Doing it three times in a row, Don. I guess as well that is, you just do it till you get it right. And uh, it's called your did, game plan, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know that uh, the double moves down in there close. Uh, I've always felt with the most successful kind of throws, you got the defensive back can't make a mistake just for a half step. So if you try to get them in there, man, it's uh, the double moves that I thought was good. They made a mistake. And we'll be back in Milwaukee in a moment. What's the over and over shave? The way you really shave. 50, 100, 200 strokes every morning. Look at one isolated area. Over and over. That's why your face can get irritated. That's why Gillette developed Face Saver Shave Cream. Face Saver has 25% more protecting lubricants than the leading shave cream for smoother, more comfortable shaves. Face Saver, 25% more protecting lubricants for the over and over shave. Nobody wants to look at underarm stains, but they're a real problem. You use an antiperspirant and you still get stains. Stains that won't wash up. Well, now there's a new antiperspirant. The first anti-stain antiperspirant by RightGuard. A new powder so effective, it helps stop wetness and stains. See for yourself. New RightGuard powder dry antiperspirant. It's the first anti-stain antiperspirant by RightGuard. Three straight times, Joe Namath tested Kenny Ellis, the defensive right cornerback for the Green Bay Packers with Jerome Barkham. Three times, Ellis made the play. Green Bay takes over. They lead 23 to nothing, 544 remaining in the game. 
Changes offensively for Green Bay. Don Highsmith is in, number 32. And Perry Williams, 31. Those are the setbacks. This is Perry Williams, the fifth-year man out of Purdue. Well, they're going to probably run out the clock or do as much as they can to do it. They've won the game easily, the pack has. It's been no contest. That's the plain truth of the matter. There's the young man out of Southern University who's been so utterly brilliant, though one could reasonably question three consecutive same calls against that young man. Looks a little Floyd Patterson-ish, doesn't he, in terms of facial bone construction, at least from a profile view. He's one fine football player. As are that entire secondary. Again, I repeat, only seven touchdown passes against them last year. The second down now in nine. Scott Hunter going all the way. Well, he either missed a call or decided to boot like it. Dallas Howe drives him down at about the seven yard line. A lonely figure sitting on the bench with a lot to think about. A long season ahead, just one game. But so much to think about. Look at those statistics and not a point on the scoreboard. Wonderment about himself, probably, and wonderment about his team, about how deficient they have been tonight and whether or not they can put anything together for a satisfactory season. A man who's a superstar, really, the biggest draw in the game, but a frustrated, disappointed individual now at this moment. I spoke of that shutout, Howard, back in 1971. Joe Namath did not play in that game, I've been informed. He has not been shut out in 75 games. All right, here comes Perry Williams, turning the corner, being driven out of bounds at the 15. Reminder again, coming up Thursday, September the 20th, Bobby Riggs and Billy Jane King. That's going to be a classic down in Houston. Well, we'll be down there together, Giff, and there's a point I'd like to make. That match will be blacked out in Houston. And there are still good tickets available for it. Not that it needs any plugging. Riggs is the biggest plug artist in the history, I think, of the male sex. But nonetheless, it will be blacked out. Tickets are available. Green Bay fans are happy. They've got another first down. The clock will start to run. The score is 23 Green Bay. The New York Jets nothing. It has been a one-sided game, a doleful affair for the Jets, who entered it with high hopes and have shown so little, they're going to have to take a whole new look at what they've put together. And both teams start to make some changes. Ferrisopoulos will get a breather, and Steve Tannen comes back in a free safety. Highsmith, 32. Williams, 31 of the setbacks for Green Bay. So Don Highsmith, obtained from Oakland during the offseason. Fourth year man out of Michigan State. Had a good preseason, too. Gained almost 200 yards. This Green Bay team is rather awesome. They're big, as Howard kept talking about earlier. Dan Devine has gone for youth. He cut Carol Dale this past week. Irrevocable waivers. He was picked up by Minnesota. They only have three members of this team remaining that were involved in those Super Bowl games Kenny Bowman, Gillingham, and Bob Brown. On second down and eight. Here comes Perry Williams. And he runs into Ed Gallagher. They're going to be in Dallas next week. Does anybody want to talk about that one? Except me? Huh? Dallas and New Orleans. Dallas and New Orleans. I guarantee you. Can you tell me you saw New Orleans play yesterday, Don? I did see New Orleans play yesterday. I saw, him, well, I saw Atlanta play. I didn't, <laughs> didn't see the... Uh, New Orleans played very much, but I think they're saving it up for Dallas in our Monday night contest. They really got a whipping. You know, that happened a couple of years ago, though, when yeah. Dallas won the Super Bowl. They lost. They were upset games. by New Orleans, yeah. which was coming off a, a defeat and a very, very strong defeat. They came off and won it pretty close to embarrassing this past week. We'll be there. That's the Cowboys of the Orleans Saints next Monday night. Third down now and seven. Scott Hunter going all the way. Hands off to Highsmith. Gillingham out in front again as he has been all night for the fine block. Towels coming up to make the stop. Atkinson moving over. Well, there's 28 Willie Buchanan. 76 Mike McCoy. That defensive unit has really been stalwart tonight. Stellar would be your description, wouldn't it? Just real tough, Howard. They've just been real tough. They closed them out, but they should be really proud of that because uh, to shut out anybody is a confidence from the defense. They're very 
right there's Aaron Brown. He's getting ready to go back in. And that's the two-minute warning. We'll be back in Milwaukee after this message. Mercury Cougars like nobody else's car. But for 74, we've borrowed a little Cougar luxury and put it into our gas-stingy Comet Compact with a special custom option. You'll spot a bit of the cat in this Comet's glove-soft reclining bucket. The rich wood grain vinyl, the thick carpeting, and the cat-quiet ride of steel-belted radials. Mercury Comet, the small economy car with a little Cougar in it. They should be comfortable. Everybody knows that Hart Schaffner Marks makes the kind of clothes I wear. But Jack, not everyone knows Hart Schaffner and Marks makes the kind of clothes Scott Hunter wears. You gotta be kidding. I like clothes that are cut sharp. Like this Saxony plaid suit from the Escadrille collection. It's pure wool. And I feel great wearing it. Did you know that Hart Schaffner Marks made clothes like that? They're great, Jack. <laughs> Even for old pros. Interesting statistics, Green Bay having outgained uh, New York only by some 30 yards, and they trail 23 to nothing. What it is is the offensive punch, and you're watching Al Woodall, the backup to Joe Namath, warming up the sidelines. We'll be seeing Woodall. Not really a fun spot to come into, I would say, would you, Don? No, it always is amazing me. What are you going to tell a guy like that? So we're going to pull this thing out? Whitby to Rocky Turner. Turner getting back just to midfield. 41-yard kick, 9-yard return. All right, Ed. Well, Whittle has had a pretty good preseason. 59% of his passes have been completed. He had a great game against the Giants, if you'll remember, Frank, until an unfortunate jostle of the arm, which the Giants deserve credit, set up a series of interceptions that killed him. All right, new setbacks, too. Mike Adamley is in. He's number one, and Cliff McCain, McLean comes back in. Adamley gets the pass over the middle, and, well, he drops it, but he has not been in the game all night. <laughs> well, he's a pro, Frank. He's made to catch something thrown right into his arms at any time. I don't know how he dropped that football. He was all alone. Three easy. Yeah. You run before you catch it. It fits for the overall performance, though, so I think it's, it's all right. Yeah. Adam Lee came to the Jets in a trade with Kansas City for Jerry Philbin, who, of course, moved on to Philadelphia. The crowd is starting to chant, we want Joe. Joe will chant back, we don't want you. Okay, here comes McLean on the draw. Second down, and he gets the first down. Coming up to make the stop, Al Matthews. Joe, and he's had a hard night under the likes of Aaron Brown. Again, misleading statistics. They just have not had the punch when they got into Green Bay territory. Clock moving, 119. Two touchdowns, Brockington scored from in close, two-yard line in the third quarter. Well, they're in the fourth quarter, but George scored on a Scott Hunter pass. Here's Whittall going for Barkham. Ellis is there again. Oh, what a night he's having. I tell you, he ought to learn from watching the other guy. You don't, you're picking the wrong men over there with Ellis. I just don't understand why they keep throwing that. That's unbelievable. Uh, maybe it's because it's the wide side of the field. You're always supposed to do that. You know? But look at Barkham. Barkham hadn't beaten him much all night, I'll tell you. Beat him one time on a good turn in and go. That Ellis is right there. Minute and two seconds remaining here in Milwaukee, and we'll be back in just a moment. What does Major Appliance Customer Care Service Everywhere mean? It means GE factory service centers in over 100 big towns. And 5,000 independents like me in smaller towns. Oh, it means you can call for an appointment for the morning or afternoon. And when I get there, nine times out of ten, I got the part to fix it. So the next time you're thinking about buying a new appliance, Remember who takes care of your old ones. General Electric, America's number one major appliance value. Goodyear makes the going great for you. With custom power cushion polyglass tires. The same popular polyglass tires that are featured on many new cars. 
Only Goodyear makes polyglass tires. And now's the time to put your car on America's favorite double-belted tire. The Custom Power Cushion Polyglass Tire. Available only from Goodyear. And from our Goodyear Blimp America, high above Milwaukee County Stadium, there you see some rather loyal fans. They're still here. The Packers, the Packers leading the Jets 23 to nothing. The Jets trying to avoid the shutout. They haven't been shut out, as we told you, since 1971, the fourth game of that season. David Knight now has come in for the Jets, the rookie from William and Mary. He's put out to the left. Adam Lee gets the draw call, gets a couple of yards, and then gets buried at the 37. And I say that considering Mike McCoy was on top of little Mike Adam Lee. McCoy, 6'5", 284 pounds. And the Jets will call timeout. Yep. Woodall will run over to get critical instructions at the sidelines from the coach. And there's Johnny Staggers. Did a couple of things tonight. It's a happy group of Green Bay Packers. And there's Woodall getting those instructions. And if we could only have some of the action we had in Houston last year when we had the Houston Oakland fiasco, maybe some help from the fans, uh, we could have some fun. Number 42 is not disconsolate either, is he, Mr. Brockington? He's had a fine night. Brockington had his first touchdown. He gained 81 yards in 21 carries. Rest of the scoring, it's Major scored from 20 yards out on a Scott Hunter pass. Markle hit on a nine yard field goal. Hit on a 37 yard field goal. Hit on a 10 yard field goal. Hard to believe these statistics. Very close total yardage. Very close first downs. And she's not very close on the scoreboard. Green Bay, 23 to nothing, 48 seconds remaining in the game. Woodall under throws to Adam Lee. Pressure from Bob Brown. Well, I'll tell you. We go to Dallas next week, fellas, and then we're in Detroit, Atlanta, and Detroit, and consistently through the years, they've had great high-scoring games. And then Dallas against Washington. I look forward, as I said, to seeing O.J. and the Buffalo Bills on our Monday night schedule for the first time against the Kansas City Chiefs. Miami against Cleveland. Miami against Pittsburgh. Washington against Pittsburgh. Those games are great. Okay. All on Monday night. That is fourth down now. Perhaps the just last chance to avoid that shutout. Margene Atkins underthrown. Thrown off to the right. The flag is down. Clock indicating 39 seconds remaining in the game. Aaron Brown again in there with that pressure. He was off sides too, I think, Frank. That was, looked like it was a that's flag. That's a good throw. way to do it. Yeah, that's one way to get the jump on him, isn't it? Leave before that thing is over. It has not been a good one, but just look at it this way. We got 12 more to look forward to. There are some good ones. You know, I'm kind of looking forward to next week. Archie Manning is kind of an exciting player. Yeah, he really is. Uh, it should be, it could be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, basic honesty rules that. Well, never can tell. You can come back from 62 to 7. Yeah. Woodall again. And he hits Atkins. Oh, no way. He, he got it. Out. Kill the clock, too. They may say, well, you know what? Listen to Jim Hill, Don. What's he saying? getting into it with the referees. Are you going to let him push off like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, at this point, I wouldn't think Jimmy would much care. First down, New York. There's Riggins. The last of the Mohegans is right. Man, that is strange, isn't it? Probably start a new fad. He didn't run any better than he did tonight, he won't. From the 17. And there we have it. Can you hold on to it? That was nice, Ellis. David Knight. And this young man has had great hands throughout the Jets training camp, the rookie from William & Mary. Watch this now. He's been doing this all through the Jets training camp. Well, they could have sure used him earlier today. Yes. I'd say that was a good catch, Frank, because Ellis had his hand right in his face. That was right there. Well, now we'll have an onside kick. 
27 seconds remaining. Bobby Howfield on. Shut out. It's now been inverted. Howfield to the uprights to make it 23 7. And Don is looking forward to an onside kick. Those I really wonder. You want if they'll get one? Green Bay, of course, anticipating the onside kick, will get the receiver types into the front line where they can handle the ball. It has to travel 10 yards before the Jets can recover. You don't think they're really going to try an onside kick, do you? Ellis looked like he hurt himself there on that last play. He was limping a little bit when he got up. I hope not. He's had a great evening. And I'm, I suspect he, I take nothing away from David Knight. He's everything off the information we have that Frank has depicted him to be a bright young rookie prospect. But I suspect Ellis was a little bit relaxed on that. I look forward to Thursday night when Giff and I will be coming to you from the Houston Astrodome. Billy Jean King against Bobby Riggs. And remember, for you folks in Houston, the event will be blacked out and you can still get good tickets. Oh, no did travel. Wasn't that a dandy, Frank? That's MacArthur Lane. Dandy Vine is taking no chances. He only leads 23 to 7. <laughs> Give me a chance to tell you some of our fine staff that are involved in our Monday night telecast. Our director is Ted Forty. Our replay unit is directed by Joe Setti. Our technical directors are Bill Morris and John Broderick. Associate director, Dick Buffington. Assistance to the producer, Howard Katz and Richard Harder. Our engineering supervisor is Roy Robbins. Our unit manager is Murray Schwartz. And of course, our producer, Don Olmeyer. Scott Hunter preserving the win. The clock runs out. And as always, the executive producer of NFL Monday Night Football is Rune Arledge. There it goes. Ticking away and ticking perhaps away a long season for the New York Jets. A very optimistic season for the Green Bay Packers. There it is. That's the gun. It's all over. Green Bay defeats New York 23-7. Cougar is on the move. The move up to a whole new class. The same size class as last year's Monte Carlo and Grand Prix, but only in size. For 74, Mercury Cougar is in a class by itself in luxury and elegance because Cougar is like nobody else's car. Deep plush bucket seats. Stylish new dash with hooded gauges set in padded vinyl. Even an optional moonroof. Cougar is on the move. Flaunting a new grill. Steel belted radio, standard. The elegant look of a new opera window framed by a Landau roof. Mercury Cougar moves up into a whole new size class for 74. Because we thought this much luxury deserves a little more room. At the sign of the cat. Once again, the final score here at Milwaukee, Green Bay 23, the New York Jets 7. This is Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith saying so long from Milwaukee County Stadium, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Our blimp provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Air travel arranged through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Chosen for travel by more sports teams than any other airline. This has been an ABC Sports presentation. She's alone at a roadside diner. Her husband has disappeared, and they're coming after her. Lawrence Leachman stars in Dying Room Only, the Tuesday movie of the week at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time on ABC.